Hello, good evening, good afternoon, um, good morning even, or wherever you might be, uh, whatever time it might be where you're watching this. Uh, this is the ProSynth Network live show. It is uh, Friday, 3rd of September. We are, is it officially now autumn or fall, as you say over there? Um, it's just gone 7 p.m. here. And um, yeah, we've got a, a cracking show. We've actually got lots of news to talk about this week. We also were supposed to be joined by a very special guest uh, this week, David Arnold. However, David has had to postpone by just one week. So David will be here next week. So if you arrived for David, um, then I'm very, very sorry. And so is he. He sends his apologies. But please stay. And he will be back next week. Um, oh, well, so be back. He'll be coming on next week. And so, yeah, you won't miss out on anything at all. And we've not had to bump anybody out of the way to make room for him, which is really nice. So um, if you're here for David Arnold, that's next week. Uh, apologies, but do stick around. And if you stick around, you will uh, meet my fellow co-host, Chris and Ben. And jumping into David's sizable uh, boots, We've got our very good friend, Mr. Kent Spong. Welcome to you, gentlemen. How are we all? Are we good? Doing well. Good. good. Yeah. Well. yeah, very good. good. You all right, Kent? Yeah, yeah. I'm, just I'm the real David Arnold, by the way. <laughs> this is what you read. Yeah, that, that, that beard and that is all, all makeup. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of disappointed now, to be yeah. honest. <laughs> 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 I've got a beer as well this week. I'm treating myself. Look at this. Oh. I didn't get myself a non-alcoholic beer. Oh, yes. I was, uh, yeah, had some left over for the bank holiday weekend, so I thought, yeah, why not? Get myself ready for the weekend. Um, welcome to let's um, first of all, let's go to California to Chris. Um, how are you, sir? Are you well? Been up to much yes. lately? Yes, uh, I've had a busy week, which uh, some of which we'll get to talk about later and mm. talk about uh, new gear and all that. So, yeah. uh, been having fun. Uh, and just with the, every week had a little more time, but uh, at least like we get to Friday and we got a couple hours just to relax and have some good chat. That's so. it. That's it. Excellent stuff. Right. I'm um, sorry, my screen's gone a bit funny there. Um, let's move across to uh, we've lost. Oh, we've lost Kent. So we'll, we'll go to oh. Ben. Um, oh, Kent I... seems to have buggered off somewhere. Um, <laughs> How are you, sir? You've um, I, I was watching a some some footage of you kind of behind the scenes at your <laughs> gig, your festival gig, yeah, and yeah. Um, I, I I've got to say, um, yeah. are you the shortest member of Electromantics? I am, yeah. Uh, yeah. At six foot seven, I'm the shortest <laughs> member. The, <laughs> the freakishly tall, all of them. Absolutely, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Mix, <laughs> mix the second shortest at seven foot two. <laughs> And then you've got the other two, uh, like, uh, I think uh, Phil's about nine foot and uh, I think Andy's about 18 foot tall. That would explain it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I, so if anybody hasn't that seen is. it, yeah. If, what, what's the um, what's the name of the channel uh, or the Facebook page? Uh, the I band? Oh, oh, our band, sorry, I know that. Yeah, your, yeah, your band. Uh, yeah, it's Electromantics. Electromantics. Go and have a look, uh, go and have a look at that. Yes, well, we yeah. did the Restricted Rocks Festival and... Uh, yeah. There's uh, our footage is only like phone footage, but they had like proper guys there. So eventually, I, I think there'll be some good quality footage. Oh, good. That comes out for that. Yeah, there was because there was some guy wandering around with was clearly a, like a, a mobile phone, um, yeah. and he did some like you know from from the front, and then he went round to the back, and he came up sort of stood beside you, and then kind of tilted the camera down, and there you are on your your little yeah. personal riser. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I didn't know whether that was just for height or whether that was for electrostatic shock prevention. Well, I, I'll tell you a very <laughs> a very boring story, but I used, to have, I used to have some platform boots. 
<laughs> really? Really? Ooh. I used to have some platform boots that, that made me the same height as everybody else. And, uh, and when I first put them on, I went into the bathroom like, and went for wash my hands. <laughs> and, you, you know, like you've got this like muscle memory of when you do stuff. The taps were about six inches below my hands. Like, when I, I just put them on. I was like, whoa, these, these really work. I had to get adju- uh, adjust to them. <laughs> anyway, I left these boots. I was devastated. I left them in a, a dressing room in Bolton. And like, when, when I got to the next gig, <laughs> I, like, I just felt dead wrong. You know, like, back to me normal light. It was like playing. I just couldn't get my head around playing. So... I got. I grabbed one of the flight cases lids, uh, and and stood on that stood on the it. night. Uh, yeah. And uh, it's become a thing with me now. I've always got to stand <laughs> on a, a flight case lid. It, it's. That's I cool. don't, it's madness. Madness. Yeah. Yeah. Mad world of me. <laughs> Indeed. No. Well, it, it was. It was very good, and you sounded amazing. I think you were doing uh, messages by OMD. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it sounded very, very good. Oh, thank um, you. So yeah. Well done. Um, Kent, that git again. Yes. How are you? Um, very perpendicular, thank you. Good, good, good. Been busy this week? Um, yeah, I'm busy every yeah. week, aren't I? Good. Well, I, don't know. I, mean, I, I come into the studio actually this evening uh, to try and prepare everything. The first thing the computer did was go, no, sorry. <laughs> yeah. And then I, as I crouched down, my big ass stuck out and there was a crash and a bundle <clears> and I broke me road door <gasps> look at how cheap is that look it's terrible mm. I've, I've had terrible luck with um pop filters like that terrible luck it's, yeah i'm just going yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> i i had so much bad luck with one that i actually bought one i don't know if i could i know this will stretch so i i use um i use this blue uh yeti for doing like voiceover stuff and I got one of nice. these things, and it just bolts on the, it just clips around the the body of the mic, and it's just this little thing here, and it's just it's it doesn't capture anything, it doesn't break so far, it's really quite useful. Um, hmm. It's only like I don't know five or a Amazon or something. Oh, I don't so, know if I can go that far. <laughs> <laughs> How far would you go though? Oh right, three. Yeah. But this this Sorry. this thing has has one built in, so I don't have to have one of these. So that's that's rather good. Bit of pulse. Anyway, we we shall put up with your pops and your clicks. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, right, <laughs> yes, Stan, you just hold it like that, like a lollipop, like a wowie pop. I think you you need to fan yourself with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we have, we have got um, mm. a huge amount of news. So the last few weeks has been very quiet, but I guess with Superbooth coming up in, what, three weeks' time, I think things are now starting to, to kind of work their way out into the wild. And we've got a range of uh, new things to talk about, which is always good. But before we do, um, let's go and just do the, uh, the the housekeeping bit. So, of course, you are watching us on YouTube, but, of course, you can also join us on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter, where our handle is exactly the same, at ProSynth Network. If you would like to donate to the show and keep us on the air, if you enjoy this kind of um, idiocy that you get every Friday night, then there is the link. It's in the chat. And sorry, it's in the uh, description underneath the video. It's there on the screen as well. Uh, your donations are very, very welcome indeed. And thanks to everyone who has made a donation over the last seven days. You are incredible and we love you. And of course, you can also do us a big, big favor and subscribe and hit that bell because that makes all the difference. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um, yeah, if you uh, want to do that and you like what we do and you want to be reminded of when we do it, that's that that helps. Um, I think that's everything out of the way in terms of all of that stuff. So let me just sort everything out this way. Hello to everyone in the chat room, of course. Um, we've got a load of regulars in there. So welcome back to everyone. And if you're new, if you've never watched the show before, give us a shout in the chat room and we'll say hi to you personally. Um, but uh, hello to Paul, to Corrosive Abuser, to Sasquatch, to Simon Fenn, I Sing the Body Electric. Uh, Wagyu, uh, we've got Get So Many Music in there, Synth Addict, Asio Head, Martin Taylor, Andrew Brooks, Will Joseph, uh, Mr. Wiggly, hello, Dom. Um, and of course, who was the first in the room today? I think that might have been uh, Keith in Watford, 
uh, today. Martin Taylor is there. He's normally first in. Um, and Andy, everyone else, if I haven't said your name, don't take it personally. Uh, we love you all, but uh, thanks for coming. Um, so we've got lots of news topics to talk about this week. And if we have time, we'll even squeeze in uh, maybe a little discussion topic where we can have a, a little tit for tat over uh, a particular subject that might be dear to all our hearts. But let us kick off with this first piece of news. Now, we were actually going to talk about this last week and we kind of ran out of time with Mel. And so we you know, we thought we'd rather hear, hear from Mel than from uh, or about this. And then everybody's leapt all over this uh, topic this last seven days and like we were the first to kind of like see it uh, anyway never mind um this is the the uh, this new plugin that is ai based and also cloud based it's called samplab and basically all you do is you install the plugin which is completely free of charge you then take your audio file and you drop it into the plugin the plugin then sends that data off to the cloud, to their processors, and within seconds you get it back, and it's now been manipulated with sorcery. And what it does is it takes that audio apart. So say, imagine it's a guitar strum going through like this. It then analyzes that audio and then spits it out as MIDI data coupled with the audio. So it split all the audio into its constituent notes, placed it in you know the, the same kind of time template, and now you have the same audio, but on the piano roll. So you take this uh, MIDI data and you drop it into the same lane as the, uh, the plugin, and now you can then move everything individually as you would any note. like this now this is nothing new um melodyne has been doing this for a while um uh, isotope have something that does something very similar uh, or can do similar kinds of things but this is free and it doesn't seem to be there doesn't seem to be any gotchas there doesn't seem to be any this is a demo and then we're going to start charging and i'm sure that they will do something you know they always tend to do that but it's it's mind-blowingly good for nothing. Mm. I've had a play with it. I've thrown some stuff at it, um, mostly Apple loops, and it seems to recognize it all, break it all wow. down. I've not really had any problems with any audio that I've thrown at it, but it, uh, it's a dead clever thing. Are you dragging Apple loops straight into it? No, so I, um, I drag the Apple loops into Logic. I then yeah. take that file and drop it into the plugin. But yeah. I haven't actually tried. I, you, I, you, maybe you can. I don't know. I haven't tried that. But it was just I, like I found. But I found with Cubase, sorry, that, that, that when you, if you use a, a loop from the the, the media library, mm. it won't work. It just oh, doesn't. Right. It, it doesn't like it at all. So I had to export that as a new audio file. Uh, okay. Bring mm. it back in and then put that in, and then it worked fine. Right. But Maybe I it's was just, just wondering it's... about the Apple loops because you know. Yeah, well, with the with the Apple Loops, you don't have to. You wouldn't have to use something like this because I think uh, all of them are tagged. So if you move it from an audio track to a MIDI track, Logic does that for you because yeah. I I believe in the way it's set up. But going, you know, from some other audio sample, then yeah, this would. It's yeah. I mean, it's it's spookily good for something that's completely free of charge. And I posted a link to this on our Facebook page a week or so ago. And I got all excited. Look, I found this brilliant free plugin. And then I, I looked into it more and saw that it was uh, AI based. So it's sending your data to its servers where that does the heavy lifting and sends it back to you. So the plugin itself is lightweight, which is always good. But I'm thinking, ah, now a lot of people don't like data being bounced around with other people's servers and what have you. And is there a privacy thing going on here? Especially and, when that data is going to Skynet, you know. Well, exactly. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I just thought, mm, and I, so I started looking into it, and they seem to be a reputable German company. Uh, not that being German has anything to do with your reputation, but, you know, it, it certainly wasn't Russia. Um, or or no, no disrespect to the Russians. I'm going to stop. I'm just going to stop. Because I'm alienating, like, every nation on, yeah, on the yeah. planet. Um <sighs> But yes, I, uh, I I looked into it, and there's 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 
privacy policies and terms of use and everything. It's all very clearly explained. So it seems pretty good. I enjoyed messing around with it. I'm not entirely sure how much I'd want to use this, but hey, it's free. Anybody got any uh, feelings on this? Com comments? I, I like it. When you I used it, oh. Oh, no, it's all right. Can you go? Go on, Kim. Go on. All right. When you used this, mm. did you, you just download it, or did you have to like sign in and make you know, sign make a new account or no, like that no way? account, nothing. Just you just click try it for free and you download it. Well, because my, my suspicious bone is not being satisfied here. Because <laughs> I can't find anything wrong. No. I mean, if they were asking for, like, oh, yeah, use you know, your email address or whatever, and it's so like, okay, right, so now we've got a list of, like, 900 people that we can spam the crap out of yeah. in, in a month's time over something that we're going to be selling for 900 quid or something like that. So I don't get it. What? Why is it free and available? What? what why is why is a company gone to all this trouble? Well, let's um, let's kind of clarify that. So um, there is an about page, and it says that the company was founded in 2020 in Zurich, Switzerland, with the vision of making music production easier, faster, blah blah blah, same old stuff. Um, and they're they're two guys, Manuel and Jan Marco, and they you know, that's it. That's there's there's really nothing else. They, they just say they want to enable people to be creative and not spend countless hours in front of the computer for technical details. There must be something sitting underneath this. They, one of the supporters is the Zurich University of the Arts, so I guess there maybe is an academic thing to this. Um, okay, yeah. But maybe, you know, I mean, this is a fairly simple little plug-in. Maybe they've got bigger plans, and this is the, you know, yeah, the casting exactly. of the, yeah. Yeah. And maybe and there they... could be some, some you know, uh, with putting it out there, then you can start to see where, uh, how people are using it, where is it going wrong, and, yeah, and yeah. gathering a whole lot of data on the usage of it. Mm. But we also saw, um, I don't know, a few months ago, uh, an academic project that was released for free, which was that tube preamp. But yeah. I didn't remember, it looked like a schematic, and you could change the values on that schematic, change resistors and capacitors and gain structures, all that kind of thing on there. And that was just released for free after they yeah. were done doing the project. Isn't it? Doesn't it say something about society today, though, that we are looking for mm. the catch? I thought that well, meant... it says a lot about me, anyway. No, <laughs> no but, I, but it... I was looking for it. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, oh, okay. Sasquatch has said it, it, you know, there, there must be... Uh, you know, there must be a price. Uh, it, a game. There must be a gain somewhere. Sure. There, there, there will be a plan, I think, but I don't think there's any need to worry. I think it's just uh, they're, they're probably testing the water for a, a, a bigger and better version, maybe. You know? yeah. yeah. We've got the, yeah. The, the, all these people promoting promoting it now, maybe. Yeah. I also, maybe it's yeah. just a reputation thing. Maybe it's yeah. like, you know, let's get our name out there. Uh, for doing something that's really cool. I mean, if you go to the the website, right, and you click on the the you know the download here button, it takes you to this page where you go, I want Mac or Windows, and then as soon as you choose that, so I'm going to choose Mac, and oh, because I've already downloaded it, so I'm going to try again, and there it goes. It just oh, you can't see it on your screen, but it's it's just downloaded it. That's it. Um, if you want to download the raw plugin, you can click there and you can download the component or the dot component or the dot VST version because um, it's a, an audio unit and a VST3 uh, plugin. Uh, so you can do that and just install it manually. So it's um, just, just there's, it doesn't, they don't even want your email. <laughs> so I, I know it's, it, it's, it's refreshing. Okay. You know, seemingly yeah. so. Maybe yeah. in a few weeks' time, we'll all learn when our computers are infected with something, yeah. and yeah. you'll know, all blame us. One of your best tunes that you've worked on is like it, it's number one in <laughs> Germany. Come back. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hasn't come back from the Google server. But did anybody else have a go with this and and try yeah. it to see what the output was like? I, no. I did. I, I thought it was great. I, yeah, I, I'd mainly use it uh, like the. The demo is, uh, and I'd men men use it on guitars because mm -hmm. I like the you know incorporating some guitar, not too much because you know don't want to make people feel sick. 
but just, <laughs> just like I like a little bit, a bit, a bit of rhythm in the background, and and sometimes changing the key and that is difficult. Isn't it? Yeah. And to be able to put notes in and stuff, it's <laughs> it, 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 it's amazing. Sorry. I'd but. I'd be interested to see how it works on um, like obviously guitars are dull and boring and quite um you know sort of uh, you know predictable um whereas maybe a vocal line or or synth chords that are kind of wishy-washy um i, I didn't try throw anything like that ken's off he's gone oh, um, oh. <laughs> but I'd, I'd like to see how it deals with oh. complex stuff yeah do, yeah do you want to jump on the bandwagon kit and you know <laughs> No, 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 no. I, I've sure. got enough enemies as it is. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, I, there you yeah. go. Well, it's that's um, it's yeah. Well, I, Kit, it's I'm brilliant. glad you're not. I'm, Kit, I'm glad you're not as jealous as they are of guitarists. <laughs> it is. It's, yeah. It is. It is. It is. It's jealousy of talent. Yeah. You've got well, a we, we have key Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, I mean, I've got a lovely guitar, but if you heard me play it. You wouldn't want me in your yeah. group, trust I'm me. So, I'm so and that's why this plugin exists. <laughs> mm. Actually, I get more sound out of it by just bashing it against the wall. There you go. That's what all they're ever good for. Um, so anyway, there you go. That is that's Samplab, um, and all you've got to do is go to samplab.com and uh, get mm. your free cup. I'm sure lots of people already have because it's kind of setting the um, the internet alight in terms of the fact of what it can do for free. And it's a demonstration, really, of how powerful AI has become. Um, and, the, you know, the fact that we now have stupidly fast Internet, most people do have stupidly fast Internet, that you can have a plug-in that relies on a remote server the other side of the world to do your processing and send it back within a few seconds, which is, is rather cool. Great. Anyway, there you go. Um, so that's Sample App. Uh, it's free. It's available from samplelab.com. Right. Um, let's see. What have we got coming up? next ah oh, yes um so we or particularly the guitarist guitarist amongst us is um a very big uh, fan of strymon and strymon have come out with a new uh pedal uh called is it the the zelza or the zelza or i don't know quite how you pronounce it, it sounds yeah. like seltzer um <laughs> But let me just find the link here because I've completely lost. There it is. Uh, let's bring this up. So this is a, uh, a phaser, four-stage and six-stage phaser uh, from Strymon in a, a lovely little purple box. It's $349. Um, and I'm just trying to see if there was a video on here. That, oh, there it is. Uh, let's have some audio samples, shall we? Let's do some of this. Are you hearing that? Yeah. Yeah, good, good. so it sounds nice it's a phaser um i'm not really into my phasers but i imagine chris is so tell us what makes this phaser better than other phasers or does it look at oh he's, uh, he's already got one he must like it the actual <laughs> thing come on then spill the beans <laughs> tell us all about it yeah, it, I, you know, I, I, I really like it so far. Um, I've had a lot of fun with it. In fact, uh, I, I mean, I've just been so crazy busy this week that just to sit down for a little bit and play and not, not work on a project, but just enjoy some music and playing. I uh, ha have really been enjoying this, and I love I love phasers. Not that like when I play live, like I, I can't say I use a lot of uh, phaser, you know, especially compared to other things like delay or, you know, obviously overdrive and distortion but um this is kind of nice it's got two basically two phase shifters in it a six stage and a four stage the four stage is really close in sound to an old like 74 mxr uh phase 90 like those script logo ones so that if you if you set the mix and the depth to halfway it pretty much does the phase 90 sound you just move your speed around but then it's got a few other modes like classic you know which is lfo barber 
uh, and envelope mode. Uh, but then it gives you a few extra things even on that side, like you can go all the way into vibrato with the mix control or back wow. it off it for a little bit some more subtle sound. Depth up gives you more feedback, uh, more like the uh, block logo phase 90s. And then um, so that that side's pretty much a standard phaser on the six stage side. It sounds somewhere like in the vicinity of like uh, MXR phase 100 or a Mutron phaser two, um, that kind of sound. But the the really interesting part of this is the voice control here. So. If you have it all the way to the phase section, uh, you know, on phase here, it it's a standard phaser. It's just uh, six stage, but uh, so phase shifters uh, work a little bit different than say coarse or flange, which coarse and flange use a modulated delay line, mm -hmm. um, and so they're the same effect, just at usually different delay times or with or without feedback. But with a phaser, it uses all pass filters. And so two stages of it will produce one notch that then gets swept around by the LFO. But with this knob, if you start on the phase side of it, um, you're starting with that all pass filter sound. And then as you turn it up, it increases you know, the virtual delay time to where you're getting into flanging and chorusing. So you can mm -hmm. get some sounds that are uh, in between phasing and flanging and uh, it's quite fun to play with. It's got the secondary function, so you can set it up if it's parallel or if it, one runs into the other one, can, and it can be mono and stereo, full stereo in and out. Sure. Uh, yeah, a lot of fun. I mean, if phase shifter's not for everybody, um, you know, I probably would have gone something other than the kind of 70s funk sound on the, <laughs> that, that demo there, but uh, it is sound, once you, once you get it dialed in, is one that is, it is and I, digital phasers just, usually don't do it for me i love right. the way the analog feel especially with guitar you can kind of push into them a bit something like a phase 90 has a lot of inherent drive to it like it just it, it's not a real clean effect but um i've been really happy with this one it sounds good before and after overdrive so um yeah i would i would recommend it the only yep. bad thing about it though and it, it's a it's a major hit for me is the price. I get I was given this for for doing a bunch of electronics work, so I, I was right. very grateful to receive this because at three forty nine U S like mm. that man that's a lot of money for a phase shifter. Right. Yeah. I, I would say I wouldn't know how much a, a phaser would would cost, but uh, yeah. It, I mean, Strymon, you know, you're getting quality, so yeah, yeah. I guess the price yeah. is justified. I'm I'm not entirely sure if I should ask Ben or Kent if they have uh, any thoughts or opinions I, I, on this. Well, I've got a thought, but I've also Go got a question. I, I thought, like, oh, God, another phase. And there go. But then <laughs> when, I, when I heard the, the demos, I thought, yeah, that's, that's really quality sound and the way that you can link the two of them together, and that's really good. But, like, looking at that, that screen that you brought up then, I, I noticed it's got USB and MIDI on it. Uh, yeah. MIDI's like a tip ring sleeve kind of a fur, and it's got, like, USB-C on it from the looks of things. What, what are they for? Like, what can you do with the MIDI and uh, like is the USB for some sort of firmware updates or? Uh, yes, to all of that. Uh, so <laughs> with the the MIDI on there, you can actually do presets for it. Uh, right. And also there, uh, um, there's a foot switch. I don't have one in in uh, reachable distance here, but they've got a, a single foot switch and a, a three button foot switch, which allows you to access favorites and things like that. Uh, with Strymon pedals, but yeah, you can you can switch programs with it. Um, there's things like clock sync, uh, so you can have it synced up to your DAW or to your other right. gear, and yeah. of course firmware updates. And thankfully, I mean, one of the one of the problems with their pedals for a long time, in my opinion, was that they didn't have um, you know USB on there, which they really yeah. needed to have. So if you wanted to update your old timeline. Um, you know, it's this involved process of, of hooking it up to some sort of uh, MIDI unit. And before I was, you know, really deep into my recording setup here, I mean, it was always trying to find one that would work with Strymon and pedals. So the fact that they put it on there, and thankfully, you know, obviously for size, they're going to put USB-C, but thankfully they put USB-C because I hate seeing synthesizers come out now that still have USB-A on it. I'm like, mm. or, you know, what what's going on? <laughs> yeah. 
or micro USB. Oh, oh yeah, that, that was the worst. Rant, one. rant. Yes, don't get Wagyu <laughs> started. Don't get don't get him started. Um, so there you go. That's this Dryman uh, Seltzer. Uh, let's call it Seltzer. Um, any, yeah. any thoughts on this, Kent? Before we move on to the next one. Only that it's lacking at least six more stages for me to be vaguely interested. Oh, well, there you go. Really? I, I think yeah. that f four, four sounds great, uh, especially, you know, it's it's a, I don't know, it's a simpler sound, but like a small stone or yeah, but it, a phase 90. It's that subtle sound that works well with, with guitar. Yeah. When, when I, when I'm, if you use a four on, well, I find that when I use four or six stage with, with synthesizers, it's an extremely subtle effect, fair enough. Yeah. But I'm always want to use a, if I'm going to be using a phaser, I want to, it, it to be actually literally like it's a musical instrument. It's, you know, like the yeah. way Tamita would use the mm. Metro stager. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would want to use it for that rather than, um, as a, you know, as a, um, a platform for the sound to lay on it. Yeah. I want it to be an instrument. So I, I like phases either to be like a hammer in the face or just don't worry too much, you know. It's just, <laughs> but that's just me. That's just the personal no. thing. Don't worry about well, it. that's that's what we're yeah. here for. Yeah. Yeah. So by so so Kent says buy two, and then you get twelve, don't you? Yeah. So how it works? No, no. don't know. Really <laughs> well. No, yeah, it's guitar trouble. pedals. Yeah, I guess, <laughs> yeah, quite. I can find two. out for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyway, that's uh, new from Strymon. It's the Seltzer. It's 349 bucks if you are that way inclined. So uh, uh, there you go. Um, let's move on to the next news topic. We have got so much going on. This was a really interesting one. Um, and I, when I first saw this, I thought, what? No, don't be silly. And then the more I watched the demo, um, the more I kind of begin began to think actually this has got some really interesting uh possibilities so this is um the silhouette Eins, which is an optical soundtrack synthesizer that's their words um let's just play some of the video um all of the sound apparently here is from the silhouette hello my name is johannes pitpsikora and this is Silhouette 1, my synthesizer. Looking at Silhouette for the first time, there are four things you'll notice. A light table, a camera, a monitor display and a controller mounted in front of the monitor. The light table, the camera and the monitor display, this is my optical soundtrack. Optical sound is a technology that was used in the past on 16mm and 35mm film on an optical soundtrack to record and playback the sound for the movie. So this is where we're going to see when how I it works. When I move my hand on the light table, it's very I clever. the hand on the monitor display and underneath the real-time generated audio wave. I can also use templates. can change the area that's used to transform visuals into audio. This rectangle shows the selection area. The flatter the area, the less optical data being read. I can load my own picture files too. Visual effects like brightness or mosaics manipulate the sound. I can fade between two picture files. So we can the watch the a lot more of that, area, um, the more complex but the we, generator. We're not going to. Oh, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> there we go. Right. Went a bit funny there. Um, this is brilliantly interesting. A little bit bonkers. Not entirely sure if it's something that could go into uh, production quite easily. However, the fact that you're making waveforms from scanning an image and using that image data to translate into audio waveforms and then blend between them. I mean, I've seen stuff. Um, UVI Falcon has a, a, you can import a JPEG and it will scan the image and, and give you uh, a wavetable based on that, that image that you scanned in. But it's, you know, it's not a process where you can just stick, uh, stick you know, a hand in front of a camera or an object in front of a camera and have it scan that image. 
but you can also upload your own images and have it scan those and you can vary the scanning areas it's just mm -hmm. it bonkers but brilliant what do you think kent is that something that might interest you this is um th th there was two things about this that i really really liked um which that showed how um smart this guy is and one of them was having that transparent perspex control panel yeah and then having on having the, the monitor display the backdrop for the panel depending on what mode it was in i like that as well mm. that was absolute I, I was looking at that going oh my god <laughs> you see now this should be able to go this should be able to sell really easy because i mean you're looking at what was it a 37 note keyboard uh, yeah. if that yeah if that and it's essentially it's a mac mini mm. so you've got a mac mini you got your mouse and your trackpad and everything and then you've got the light table and the webcam this is all pretty easy to get hold of gear mm. bolt it into a case and it's all about that software yeah and i think it's one of those machines where it falls into the category of things like the VCS3. Um, because the VCS3, anybody who thinks that you, you can write a lovely tune on a VCS3 is deluded. <laughs> right? um, because you can't, and that's not what it's for. This thing is brilliant. It's, it's, it's crazy, it's nutty, it's brilliant. It looks very, very unpredictable. I would probably be tempted within the first couple of days of buying one of these um putting me dick on that and see what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the thought crossed my mind <laughs> exactly really that didn't even enter into my wow you guys well we're, we're younger at heart than you or clearly so, oh, geez, <laughs> yeah. and, but this this reminds me very because i was going to do a controller for um for Omnisphere, and I probably mm -hmm. shouldn't have said that. <laughs> so, but basically, and it was based around Mac Mini in a case, <clears throat> blah, 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 blah. And it's very similar to this, but this has this extra, you know, that, that kind of real, um, uh, you know, that kind of vintage German film type of madness about it. Yeah. You know, you'd, so when you used to, used to see these black and white films that were coming out, say, in the... In the um, 50s and 60s out of Berlin and it had all that weird mm. sounds going on in the background this thing is built for it this yeah. thing can do it without breaking into a sweat um, I'm tempted the thing's going to be about 4,000 euros really I was just price. trying to look for a, yeah Ooh. Um, so that's yeah I mean that's going to be obviously including a probably a really top notch Mac Mini mm. Um plus the you know the software so it, it's not really that expensive no. um it, when you compare it with other, other machines but this thing's going to be able to do i mean really really crazy stuff i mean if, if the guys watch the video but watch the video to the end and see just the madness that you can achieve with this thing yeah and then you've got external sources and they had it playing with other keyboards and stuff like that and controlling different um and modulation sources and speeds and stuff on other machines from this one thing by just moving all this crap around it was yeah i go oh my god you'd be, yeah. you'd be stuck in the studio for days just making incredible noise yeah good or bad you know yeah brilliant i think it's great yeah absolutely and and if you are going to super booth this year uh, he's got a stand uh, and so you'll be able to go and play with this um chris any thoughts on this is this something that uh, might interest you yeah, I, I think I'm with Sasquatch on this. Uh, two things. One, it's um, absolutely incredible and fascinating from a technical perspective. Uh, to sit and play with it, I'm sure, would be an extraordinary amount of fun and, and artisticness going on with it. Uh, my thing about it would be the final product of the music. Mm. If you didn't see how the music was created, 
I don't think anybody would be going goo goo over it. Right. It, it, it's it. Ha this is sort of a like I said, like it's it, it's really like an art exhibit, you know, somebody yeah. creating music in a in a special way, and I could see this really being used in a in a, a live way. But as far as like making your next record with it, I don't think the results were enough to be, you know, were enough to interest me. And I think with this kind of thing, you could probably do some software stuff. Like you were talking about the UVI stuff. I haven't haven't tried that, but um, I, I think you could do it software for a lot less money you know if you want to explore you know explore those kind of uh new modulations i mean you know mm. some of these synths like um you know that can use wavetables as modulation sources i mean there's just it's just opening more and interesting unpredictable ways of of doing synthesis but again i think uh, the thrill of it is in watching and seeing how it's done. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It does it does seem a very kind of audio visual experience? But yeah, it, it's a really mm. clever. I, I think it's just dead oh, clever. And, and I think absolutely. from a sound design perspective, if, if you know if people are looking to create new sounds that you know have never existed before because they're not scanning, you know, lumps of grass or or you know whatever it might be that you you stick under the camera, you're going to get something very unique. And I think maybe even lends itself to this kind of trend oh, uh, even as a trend but uh film composers sound designers for movies are making music using stuff from the film or you know stuff from the this you know the, the the one that springs to mind is chernobyl the tv show where the the musician the composer she went to chernobyl and just hit stuff and sampled it and then came back and made music with those samples. Yeah. So if you're trying to make music with something that is going along with, you know, so maybe you are, you know, maybe you've got a, a camera, a macro camera that's scouring the depths of the undergrowth and you can make him uh, sound from those images to go, it kind of ties in. Yeah. I, I, and I again, it, it's the story of it that makes it special, exactly. not yeah. the yeah. sound of it because those sounds of Chernobyl or, or, or whatever it is, like, it doesn't, you know, it's like, well, how is this interesting? This can be done with other modulation sources and other synthesizers and samples mm. and stuff. It, did, it doesn't need to be that. But when you make the story about the documentary's music, about it being music from that source, then that's what makes it special. Yeah, so exactly, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it, it, so Sasquatch asks, uh, why not just feed video into it? And here, here again, here's where you could make the art and the story about it. Like, you're doing a, a documentary sound, and so you could take video of the thing you're documenting and then have that be the modulation sources for the soundtrack itself, which is kind of an interesting way of <laughs> yeah, thinking about it. Yeah. You can do that with it. It, it, it runs. Yeah. You can run a film through it. Oh, wow. And then, because I did that bit, and there's a bit in there with the guy walking down the stairs. Oh, yeah. And then he modulated the, the video. Wow. And it was then in turn modulating the sound. And that's that's what I mean about it. It's because... It's not. It's not a machine to create music in in right, the right. traditional sense. Traditional, yeah. Um, and but then that unpredictability of it is what um, drew people to the things like the Distinctly One Hundred and stuff. Because mm. like at the end of the day, with those EMSs, it was literally you know it's like having a big transistor radio and sticking pins in it and see see what happened. It's just like and see what it did to the sound. Yeah. And it's the same kind of that um, unpredictable um, element to it. But like mm. like Chris touched on there, where he said about you know you know when you, if you were doing a documentary on let's say Chernobyl and you take footage or photographs of Chernobyl and feed it in, you're actually creating the music from the visuals from yeah. the, from Chernobyl itself. So yeah, it it, it lends it lends an authenticity to the music or the sounds that you're getting from mm. the machine. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's it's, just, it's brilliantly bonkers. Um, commercial, yeah. mm -hmm. I don't know, but I wondered uh, how it was planned in, uh, to be released, uh, like the final thing. Is it? Is I it don't know. Be, is it going to be a kit? Because really, if it is based on a Mac Mini, I think it's brilliant, by the way. But uh, if it is based on a Mac Mini, then surely you you could run the software with just a webcam, maybe. You, you know, if you. Yeah. yeah, it's just taking in an image, isn't it? It doesn't matter. I mean, it does say that if you are interested in buying one of the first silhouette units, so there's there's 
clearly an intention to make this a commercial product mm. or of some description. Do you remember um, many years ago, because I'm trying to remember when I, there was, I don't know whether it was a company or whether it was a, a you know, like a, an, a, an educational project where you could um, build this, uh, basically a, like a drum sequencer. And what you did is you printed off the templates to make cubes. So all you needed was a, a computer and a printer and these files, and you printed these um, designs off, and you, you literally just cut them out, and it was like origami. You stuck together and made these cubes, and, and on each side of the cube was an image or a shape or something, and each of those images or shapes related to a sound. And then you then printed off a like a, a, a square sheet, like a grid, and then you placed your cubes like you would on a 16-step grid sequencer. Yeah. But then you positioned your webcam over the top of this thing so it captured the entire grid. And then the, there was a piece, small piece of very you know, lightweight software that interpreted that, and you could then build your own step sequencer stroke drum machine from pieces of paper and card. <laughs> Sorry. It's the emperor. Ob Obi-Wan <laughs> Kenobi has just entered the room. <laughs> Hello, Fiona. Thank you, my master. <laughs> <laughs> Don't call her Palpatine, honestly. We um, do, but yeah, though. does anybody else remember that? Because I printed no. everything yes, off. I remember it. it. Excellent. Thank you. I, I wasn't going. I printed it all off and never made it. But I was watching the videos, and it was just stunning that you could have this this drum machine with this webcam, and it was all very kind of Heath Robinson. But no, but the idea yeah. of the cubes was that where you had the six different patterns and if you showed a different pattern to the webcam it produced it played a different sound that's right yeah yeah that's it, was, it was it was really it was really clever and very you know all you needed was some some of the, the kind of the thicker card that you could run through your inkjet printer and do you know i think i went through a couple of cartridges printing everything <laughs> off and then I, I said i'm gonna make that when i've got some time and um here we are, 2021. That's probably gone in the bin, probably gone in the recycling. <laughs> but a clever idea, nonetheless. No, there you go. So that's the, the Silhouette Eints. And if you want to see the Silhouette Eints in person, then go to the Super Spread, I mean, sorry, the, the Super Booth event um, in Berlin <laughs> on the 21st. No, not on the 21st. It's Super Booth 21. <laughs> when is it? It's next week or the week after. I can't remember now. Um, we'll all be telling because uh, all these people are coming down with nasty coughs and colds. Um, but Booth 270. And you can go and see uh, this gentleman with his silhouette eyes. Mm. Very, Very interesting right. stuff. Right. And um, let's get a quickie out of the way here um, because uh, I'm the only person here that's probably got a kind of a vested interest in this because I'm probably the only person that uses uh, Reason. Um, but Reason 12 has arrived. Um, at long last, it's now an official release. Um, let's just have a quick watch of the, uh, the launch video. Reason 12 is out to bring the new to your music. A new look, a new sampling instrument, and a whole new way of dialing in your sound. The biggest update in Reason 12 is the new supercharged Combinator. The Combinator puts multiple rack devices into self-contained, massive sounding presets, which make up most of your favorite patches in Reason Sound Bank and new Reason Plus sound packs every week. The new Combinator takes that same power and expands it to a highly customizable blank canvas for you to dream big. Use the Combinator's editor to design your own front panels, adding knobs, faders, control wheels, and buttons to build your own rack device interface powered by Reason synths and effects inside. Easily map parameters inside the Combinator to controls on your layout, even controlling several devices at once with one simple control. Even if you don't plan to build Anyway, we, we'll cut that short because we, we've got loads to cram in. Um, so this is Reason 12, which is now an official product. Um, it's been available to subscribers of the Reason Plus uh, subscription service for a little while, but it's now complete. And it doesn't add a huge amount. It adds the Mimic Sampler, which we've covered before, but we didn't uh, see in that video. It covers, it's got this new combinator. We've got high-resolution graphics and the fact that you can zoom in on the the reason environment which makes it uh, nice and easy to use um and that's kind of about it i mean there's a few little odd tweaks here and there but there doesn't seem to be a huge amount else going on maybe there's some some decent stuff going on, on 
on under the hood. What really did interest me was this this new combinator because that's always been one of the the great things about Reason is that you can connect like literally everything to everything within the Reason environment. Mm -hmm. And then when they introduced the combinator some years ago, you could put all of this stuff into a single unit and and have it all work as a single instrument now you can design your own interface because before you you were restricted to what uh, the combinator interface gave you which was usually like four buttons four knobs and and a couple of switches that was it now you can build your own and not only can you put on your own sliders and buttons and rotaries and patch points and all this kind of stuff you can create your own uh visuals and i'm just trying to find that clip that it's somebody great, that, though because if you're if you make some libraries and that you can do like a co uh, a contact kind of thing yourself kind yeah of yeah reason yeah but i mean this is something that ryan from uh, reason studios put together so he's just he's used photoshop and he's come up with these he's created these images and made that the background and then he's been able to put the the knobs and the faders all onto these units so they look like you know guitar pedals and sitting underneath this will be some of reason effects giving you the overdrive the course and the digital delay so it kind of gives you that that freedom to design your own uh stuff you know right down to the front end not just you know sitting in a, a an unwieldy combinator but yeah. it's it's out there it's an upgrade of 129 euro stroke dollars uh, from any existing version so from reason one through reason 11 you can upgrade to this for just 129 and of course it has still has the benefit of being able to be used as a plug-in within yeah. other doors as well so that's that's always good there's also um, the uh, subscription thing as well isn't it so there? yeah so yeah. now you have reason plus which uh works as a subscription service i think it's 20 bucks a month yeah. and for that 20 bucks you get access to the entire reason uh program and all the updates you also get access to every single reason rack extension one that's produced by by reason yeah. themselves uh, and you also get all these free sand packs and there's like there's usually half a dozen a week new sand packs and they might only have 10 20 sounds in them but they're free if you're you part know, of the, the subscription service you know what i, I was thinking uh, Steady. I, know, I know you want to <laughs> i know you want to keep this brief <laughs> but i was thinking like I, I, you know I've, I've probably accumulated a couple of rolling cloud instruments now so i might have a break from rolling cloud for a bit Mm. Well, I might try this out. Uh, yeah. and, not the sequencer, because I can't be arsed with another sequencer, <laughs> but like, using it as a VST. And that combinator thing, that, that really fascinates me, that, because uh, you know I like doing graphics anyway. So yeah. uh, to, to be able to like, make my own configurations of synths and that and you know, give them a bit of branding and stuff... It, it's like keep me occupied for hours. Won't <laughs> yeah. be any band stuff getting done at all. <laughs> no, I, it's, I really uh, like the look of that. Yeah, yeah. Think... it's it's really made the combinator now. I mean, after all these years, finally, it kind of for me it has more of an attraction because you can now customize that front end um, mm. as well as having everything that sits in there. Guys, uh, any any thoughts on this? So I know you're none of you are, are reason people, but um, does this? tempt you in any way to maybe invest it doesn't it doesn't no. tempt me i i'm i'm sold out for logic but uh i will say it looks nice it looks mm. like the features are, are great mm. i like the the gooey of everything that they did there um so yeah well uh, other than that nothing really to say about it no I'll take your word for it yeah well i mean i've, I've been testing this for a while now and mm -hmm. it, it has been a lot of fun to you know build those front panels of course, the other thing that's that's new in terms of instruments is the Mimic Creative Sampler, which is really it really is a creative sampler, or as we used to call them back in the day, samplers, um, <laughs> because we seem to have lost that that element mm. of creativity, that fact that you can just throw any sound in, and then just using some of the the features on there, just manipulate it um, very quickly, very easily. And, and that's something that seems to have been lost nowadays. And that's, that's nice to see with this. Um, and I said, you know, there's the, the, the visuals update. So everything's in now yeah. in high resolution, uh, which is but, something I've been working on for a long while, but I'm not entirely sure how worthwhile yeah. it is, but 
Well, I, I mean, the high resolution stuff needs to be done. I mean, just look at Waves and all their poor well, plugins. Very true. Very <laughs> lately. true. But, but I got to give them credit because, you know, I guess if you're more of a, a visual type person, the, the way things look does make a difference. It and is. how you interact with it, it makes mm. a difference in that. And so something like Reason, which looks good, uh, is visually pleasing to look at. Logic, I like after when they updated to Logic 10, uh, man, there were some people that just really had a con conniption fit that didn't look like Windows 95 anymore. Yeah, and I was like, this is great. It looks like an artistic tool now. It still has all the technical ability, but it's much better to look at. And uh, that's to me, that's really important. I, I've got a friend that uses tool, Pro Tools, and I, I go and I watch him. You know, if I pop in there to help him out or something. It's like, oh my gosh, like I could not stand to look at that for a long period of time making music. And <laughs> so, you know, with things like Reason and Logic, it, you know, ironically, and, you know, that uh, they're named as such, but they're very artistic mm -hmm. uh, in the way it's presented, which to me is a valuable feature. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're interested in Reason, I think it's 399 for the standalone product. So you can still buy it as a standalone or it's $19.99 a month for Reason Plus, which gets you the access to the application, a whole bunch of instruments and uh, weekly sound packs, and any upgrade that comes along while you're subscribed. Um, and if you want to upgrade, it's 129 uh, euros stroke dollars uh, to do that. Um, so there you go. That's Reason. Um, nice to see it. It's still going strong. 21 years now, I think, which is, uh, I know, you know, compared to the others. A lot of people kind of wrote it off, and uh, it's nice to see it's still around. Yeah. Right. Um, let's shall we talk some hardware because we haven't really talked about any synth hardware for a very long time, let alone uh, this week. Yeah. Um, I say we're going to talk about hardware. We're actually going to talk about a software <laughs> update to a piece uh... of hardware. But um, it's this: um, Korg have released the Wave State 2.0. Uh, software stroke i don't know is there a firmware upgrade to this as well or is it just just the software but basically the the bottom line is you can now load your own samples into the korg wave state and use them from within the instrument so uh, you can sequence your your samples um and you can import up to four gigabytes of your own multi samples uh, into the sample builder application for mac and windows and use your samples in wave sequences or as single multi samples, just like the factory multi samples. Um, a really nice editor librarian now, uh, which has got like pretty much everything displayed there on the screen, uh, and a whole bunch of user requested improvements. Um, I, I've not really, I've not fallen for any of these uh, machines as, as much as I like, uh, particularly you know the wave sequencing stuff. But this is a big update for this this little synth and kind of gives it a little bit of extra value, shall we say. Um, I think it transforms it, really, doesn't it? Really, yeah. Being able to put your own samples in like that, it, it's it's mm -hmm. put it into V-Synth territory, like, almost. It's Well, can, right, that's, you, a, you, that's a big, yeah. Yeah, well, mm. you can you can do all kinds. Uh, once you can get your own samples in there, it, it just totally transforms it. So, yeah, it... it, it for me, it's made it interesting where before it, it just wasn't interesting at all. I'm not keen on the form factor of it. If they made if they made a rack version of that or a desktop version, I'd probably get one. But yeah, <clears throat> I, I don't I really don't like that form factor. It, 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 mm -hmm. It's not for me. You know, it takes no. up unnecessary space. Those keys will never be used. So yeah. For me, they might as well not be there because I'll never play anything on it. Uh, so yeah. a, a rack version of that um, with that sampling update. I, I've got samplers everywhere. I never sample anything. I, I'm, obsessed. <laughs> I'm obsessed with sampling and I never really do anything. So, yeah, I bring that in so it could sit there doing nothing like all the others. But yeah, yeah. I have seen that if, somewhere on YouTube, there is a video of someone who bought one of these like early doors and unscrewed it. Val invalidated the warranty, removed the keyboard mechanism, yeah, and took a saw and yeah. cut everything off at the bottom ah, of the right. the, the yeah. user interface, and then fashioned something to make it look and and made themselves a desktop module version of it. Yeah, and if if people are going to those lengths at the very start of this product's life, surely Korg have m messed yeah. up. 
in yeah, terms of their, their, their market awareness. It doesn't need a keyboard. Well, it doesn't need that keyboard. If you stuck a five octave keyboard on it, it'd be smart, but it yeah. doesn't need that little keyboard. Yeah. And, that's, and then that one yeah. one that they tease that what has the the sixty one key the mod the, wave SE. Yeah, yeah. The SE. Then you don't get anything else with it. You literally just get the keyboard. There's not an expansion of the UI on it. There's not a bigger screen or anything. That's kind of the a only, bummer. Yeah, I think the only <laughs> thing that changed apart from the, the, the sixty one notes was that the keyboard mechanism had aftertouch which of course these don't have <laughs> yeah. and they had reprogrammed all of the presets to respond to you know to aftertouch so some poor yeah. sod is going through patch by patch <laughs> aftertouch <Slider>. aftertouch <laughs> aftertouch for however many and you know what i mean when they debuted the or so they, they teased the op six which was the first one of these to kind of be teased at nam the last nam that people went to and they had one up on the wall and it was a 61 note and the interface mm. looks pretty much how it how it ended up looking on the on the actual machine but the, yeah, it was clearly in their minds let's do a 61 uh, 61 note version of this and then when it when it drops or when these things start dropping it was 37 and and quite a from what i hear a very plasticky kind of lightweight feel to it but what do you think ken done I don't know anything about her. Never seen one. Never tried one. No, but it doesn't. Does this would this, would this appeal to you? Being able to load in, uh, you know, a bunch of your own samples and then, you know, use the wave sequencing on them. Um, no, probably not actually, because I've already got the Oasis anyway. So right, yeah. I mean, I can see how that'd be good, you know, for people. But I don't really know enough about the machine to be able to uh, appreciate how much that update is doing for the owners of yeah them. i know another yeah fair enough yeah anybody else i mean we we say this yeah. every time we talk about these things like Wilderness yeah we... music has just said in the chat uh, i will not play mini keys but i do want mini keys on my desktop module for programming that, that is a really good point actually that keyboard yeah. it, it, when you're actually over at the synth you don't want to keep nipping to a controller to see what the it's just strange it sound like you could run a sequence and do it that way, but yeah, it, it, I suppose the mm -hmm. keyboard is useful as a, a sound audition. I know, but yeah. if you have your controller out on your desk, I mean, yeah, it's not it's not far to go, like yeah. You know, you put you put your module up on a stand, and then you know down yeah. you have your your keyboard, and then you're not yeah. having to go back and forth between any of that stuff. Yeah, you, oh, I, you just yeah. Yeah, you can set it right in front of you know the module right in front of you and do it just the same in it. And actually, having the module up like on some sort of stand would make it easier uh, to do. Yeah. Well, one one thing I'll comment about this with the sampling. I mean, really cool that the that they're uh, allowing user samples and it's four gigabytes. It's not like you know fifty eight k or something like mm. a, lot of, a lot of people would do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there are still some like sampling parts of it that seem like they could be upgraded more. Um, I watched the part of the well, I watched the loop op video on it. Even though I, I'm just not, I like the sound of this thing, but it's just not something I'm interested in programming the workflow mm. of it. Uh, but you know the editor makes things in some ways easier and usually I'm, I'm really for editors but also like with the how it handles samples like this is not a replacement for a, a good sample machine or sample software no, um, no there's no velocity for the samples i mean you could there are workarounds for it but there's so much work to set it up like mm -hmm. in different layers that it's just it's not really worth it. i mean this thing is really about those um what, what are they called wave lanes or whatever yeah yeah, I don't remember, but yeah, I, I so uh, yeah, it, it's cool. I think the people that have it will really enjoy this update, but I, I think hopefully they'll work on it a little bit more too and really get some of those other things ironed out. Workflow yeah. seems like it could still be improved a bit. Mm. Yeah, it's um, I, I, everyone that's got one that I've seen is like, oh wow, this is a game changer, um, but it still doesn't make me want one. Um, but there you go. I'm old school. Give me a wave station. Proper old school. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. Okay. Well, that's Korg's uh, version two of their, um, their their wave state software and sample uh, editor and uploader. Four gigs of samples you can throw in. Um, let's come to this lovely uh, piece of software, which uh, we've been 
Oh, well, Chris is actually, I'm going to kind of hand this over to Chris because Chris has been involved um, in uh, testing and uh, doing patches and, and all sorts of, he'll tell us more, I'm sure. But mm. our friends at um, Pulsar Modular have come up with a brand new plugin called the, the P42 Climax Line Amp, uh, which is this little, oh, hang on, sorry, got the wrong page here. What am I doing? There we go. Ah, oh, this is terrible technology. Let's get rid of that and let's bring this. Oh, I've lost that. I've lost everything. You all disappeared off my screen. Right, let's do this properly now. Share my screen and now the things. Oh, it's all locking up on me. Oh, I hope this doesn't uh, mean something's going to go wrong. That would be awful, wouldn't it? Every still, uh, everything's still looking okay on our end right now. Good. That's just, good. Maybe it's just me. Right here we go. Um, it's picked this thing and now it's not sharing it. Come on, share the blooming thing. Anyway, tell you what, Chris, you tell us a little <laughs> bit about the P42 <laughs> Climax line amp from I Pulsar Modular. Yeah, so uh, we've you know all been enjoying the Pulsar Modular plugins, um, the Fix Filter Bank, uh, and also the Lunar Lander. Uh, so fixed filter bank is like the uh, Moog modular unit, and we talked about that a little bit last week. And, and Lunar Landers, a uh, plate reverb, a bucket brigade delay, and a, like a two power amp saturator. And uh, so Ziad got a, in contact with me about this P42 Climax and said, hey, I'm, I'm building this plug-in here. I'd like you to do some beta testing and also um, some presets for it. And so got working on that and been working on it for a few weeks. And uh, it's really been an interesting plugin. It's, it's been kind of uh, fascinating. Uh, so this plugin is basically a, the, the start of the concept is it replicates the sound of the wolf box. And the wolf box was a very particular uh, DI unit that was used in Motown Records. Uh, and, and the reason that it was used is that microphones back in those days were just heinously expensive. And so uh, sometimes the studios would run out of microphones. And so we, you might, you know, instead of miking up your bass amp, what they would do is they'd have legendary players like James Jamerson plug into one of these direct box and have it go into the board. And so... Um, that kind of sound became so famous. You know, James Jamerson is like one of the, you know, one of the greats as far as bass players go. And so it kind of went after that sound and that saturation and just the 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 little tweaks that it would make to your sound as you would go through that, play your instrument through it. And of course, be other used for other instruments, but the, the bass is the one that it was like really known for. So um, I started giving it a try. Uh, I've got one of my one of my basses up there and then um, trying it with guitars. And so what Ziad, Ziad has done is he's taken that idea, but then he's added to it. So you get um, some other useful features like um, a high pass and low pass filter, like a really smooth three decibel roll off so that you can just kind of shape your sound. Then there's the shelving uh, that are the knobs on the, the bottom. You can engage these shelving filters and adjust the frequency. And I found those to be really uh musically done because i mean we got a lot of eq plugins <laughs> you know there's so many <laughs> out in the market what's is what about this thing is going to make me want to use it and so um as i started using it started playing around with it and then of course you can see in the middle of the plugin there's a picture of the uh very particular transformer that was made for these units and they have a very certain characteristic about how they saturate these triad uh transformers and so um as you're playing around with these different features that it, it's just so useful in tone shaping so um some of the ways that i have used it i use it as a as kind of it was intended as a, a kind of a direct box sound so i'm plugging into my my focus right interface straight from my guitar or bass and then using this to shape the sound and getting all sorts of good re response to it that saturation will bring in a little bit of compression and and just kind of bring the dynamics together so especially if you're playing bass you can get just like a little bit of grit to it and it makes it kind of just push through the mix and of course, with all the EQ and stuff like, so usually I'll use Amplitube or uh, Neural DSP um, amp modeling when I'm recording into the box. 
And I was experimenting with this. So when you, if you get this plugin, there'll be a whole bunch of great presets. I know Z had had um, created some presets. There's like a, a Motown bass in there and stuff. And I, I created some presets also for this for some different sounds so like prog rock, Getty Lee type stuff or funk bass. Uh, but also for some guitar stuff, like I'm, I've been working this week on a track that I've, I, and then I got like, I, I wanted to get it out earlier, but I, uh, unfortunately it's one of those things where I, I start something like, well, I could do this and this and this. And so I've, I'm out like three parts to the song now that are totally different, like <laughs> pop rock and like kind of dub reggae and like eighties rock and, and putting this track together, but I'm using a, on a whole bunch of different instances for guitar and bass and synthesizer. So that was one other thing. I'm going a little bit long with this, but I just, I want to get it out there. So if you've got a synthesizer, a software synthesizer, and it's like, it's not being quite as real, there's now two things to go to. I mean, we, we've, we've already talked about Incinerator, uh, Dominic's plugin, Mr. Wiggly Incinerator, which can give it space like it's in the room. And then using P42 also. So I had really great, so I, you know, kind of crap all over Cherry Audios because they're so generic sounding soft synths. And uh, <laughs> sorry to anybody that offends, but they are. <laughs> Ran it through P42, and all of a sudden it's like just you know upping the saturation a little bit, kind of taming some of the the uh, how the where the signal bumps and giving it a little more like warmth in the low and low mids. Uh, really have had good results with this, and the thing that's surprising is that if you look at it on paper, like well it's a it's kind of like a preamp with some EQ on there, a little bit of saturation. Like well that's a pretty common thing, but the thing it comes down to is like how well does it do it and for mm. me this thing does it really musically so yeah because the one of the big things about this um that, that made it popular was its use in the motown sound yeah, yeah. so you know the uh, the funk brothers um and people like james jameson dennis coffee robert white joe messina um this was all part of their sound you know the the like the in-house band so this really is um it's it's up there with uh, you know one of the kind of the, those legendary pieces of equipment. Um, I I'd say I I have I've been having a play with it the last couple of days and I actually there's something we're going to be talking about a little later um, drum machine related and I ran that through it and that mm -hmm. really made a difference. So that yeah. on a digital drum machine, it just gave it weight and um, yeah, just it was just yeah really nice, really really one, nice. One of the presets i did uh i'm sorry i don't remember the name of it but you can my presets all have like an instrument thing and then a dash after it and it says right. something 808 drum machine or whatever uh that 808 uh, i i ran the Roland cloud 808 into it and that's how i cre had created that preset mm. and that worked really well it sounded yeah. really good <laughs> it does it it really, in, in fact, I, I was playing around with this this plug-in drum machine, which we're going to talk about later, which I think most people have probably know, know what, what it is. And I thought it sounded great. And then I put it through this, and then I took it off, and I thought, oh, it doesn't sound so good anymore because it, it really made that much of a difference. It was it was very very good. Really enjoyed it. Um, so ben, there's some. Oh, oh go ahead. Sorry, oh, sorry. sorry. Uh, let, let me answer a question, if that's okay. Um, sure. There's some talk about the name Climax, and so um, you can read about the history of this Motown wolf box and the transformer was coated in this uh, material like molybdenum or something. Molybdenum. molybdenum. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Aluminium. We, we, so, we, <laughs> have, we have a, we have a factory that makes that stuff just around down the road from us. Yeah. yeah. So I guess one of the, uh, one of the places where it's mined in the U S uh, or where, where these resources probably where they got it for, for this um, uh, direct box is from a, a place that's called Mount Climax. So yeah. just a, it's a, actually a literal mountain, and that's where the name is taken from. So it's just like one of those little things. Yeah, we, we, the, the company that's based around the corner from me is called Climax Molybdenum Limited UK. Um, so yeah, that's, that all makes kind of sense now. Um, and actually, Ziad's in the, the chat room. Ziad, the, the guy that's behind Pulsar Modular and behind this plugin, mm -hmm. Uh, is in the chat room and he, he's provided a, a brief explanation there. But my uh, 
my interface is now going very slow and getting a bit worried that this is all going to crap out any minute now. See, I, I pressed that button ages ago and it's only now coming up on the screen. Very strange. Anyway, um, Ben, you've had a chance to play with this. Any yeah, thoughts? Yeah, I, I have had a mess with it. And it does, it, it, everything that Chris said, Chris summed it up beautifully, really. Uh, but it, 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 like yourself, uh, Robbie, I just found that once I'd put it on something, it sounded crap without it. It was yeah. like, it, 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 mm-hmm. does, it, it does add body and uh, and uh, oomph to, to something that, that isn't normally there. And I, I never thought about using it on uh, synths, really, you know, like to bring them yeah. to life like in that way. That's a great idea. I, I think it... I wonder how I, I I don't want to put any downers on it at all because I do think it's brilliant. But I, I found that like it might have been a bit heavy if I used too many of them uh, on the processor. So I don't right. know whether you save it for your master bus or whatever. But my computer's like two thousand and nine, so that no. might, that might have to do that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, it, I, that, when Chris was talking, he was saying like, uh, uh, and I had him on this and that and that, and I thought, oh yeah, it's my computer. This, it's my computer <laughs> playing on. Uh, but uh, I was thinking about getting one of the new Mac Minis, but um, I'm gonna wait see if they do bring out this. Yeah, this it's a pretty good idea. Yeah, yeah. I'd but uh, I think I'm due an upgrade on the computer front. Uh, but yeah, it's brilliant. It, it just adds a load of warmth and quality mm. that it, it isn't isn't there you know like normally and I, I th- i'd love to be able to use it loads of instances of it but i think i'm gonna have to stick it on the master bus uh, yeah and, uh, and just or just get a better computer <laughs> oh yeah or, or or like render the part when i when I've yeah got it on. yes that you too know, i could do yeah. that like if, you know if I, if I did stick it on the baseline uh, yeah render that off yeah yeah i uh mine's a 2019 macbook and I was right. raising a whole bunch of instances off of it. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I did think it was more me. Than the <laughs> yeah, Zed yeah, says it's less than two percent CPU. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I definitely thought so. Yeah. There's something definitely wrong with my machine. <laughs> <laughs> too, too, Kent, too much was... Guinness on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you, Kent? Did you get a chance to listen to this? Got any thoughts no, on this one? No, no, I didn't. No. no. Um, yeah, it sounds like something I would actually would like to implement. Actually, mm. yeah, it's. So it's, I, it's I, will, I will be. I will be looking at her. Well, it's funny you should say that because if this has, if any of this discussion about the P forty two has uh, stimulated you to um, to maybe invest in one, hold mm. your horses because Ziad has been incredibly generous. You might remember that when uh, he launched, um, was it Lunar Lander Fixed filter. and Fixed Fixed filter Bank? Bank. Yep. Um, Ziad said, here, here's three codes, give them to your viewers, um, or three selected viewers, and um, yeah, they can have a, a copy free of charge. And Ziad has been incredibly generous and done the very same with the P42 Climax. So um, we will be running a contest uh, for you guys to enter. It's a really simple thing. There's a link to a Google uh, survey document you just put in. You answer the question, you put your name and your email address. We do nothing with the email address other than to use it to contact you if you win. And we'll announce the winners uh, next week, shall we? Do that. So we give them a week yeah. to do it. It's mm-hmm. a simple one question thing. Uh, we'll post the link up on the Facebook group. I'll put the link below in the description after the show. So if you're watching this on Catch Up, you can go for it, go to it from there. And um, yeah, you'll get a free copy of um the p42 climax line amp if you are selected there's three to to, to choose from so give it a go and thank you ziad yeah, thank you very thank much you. indeed yeah. congratulations on a wonderful plugin and thanks for your generosity so um yeah uh, if you're not already a member of the facebook page i'd, I'd go and join up there as well because we'll post the link over there as well mm. right uh, that is the p42 climax lineup from pulsarmodular.com it is out now uh, normally costs 210 euros, but it's worth every penny. Um, right. Shall we talk about, let's do a couple of quickies. Um, Sign Vibes have got a new effects plugin. Uh, it is called Dispersion. 
I wonder what that could sound like. Um, <laughs> it's very good. Um, dispersion, bouncing ball delay. It's $39 uh, plus VAT. Uh, comes as an audio unit or VST3 uh, plug-in for the Mac and has a demo version as well. Let's have a little listen to uh, some of it. So I think we get the idea of what that does. Um, it's a bouncing ball delay. Um, it has up to 32 sequential delay lines whose times are spread exponentially via a special formula developed at Sign Vibes in order to produce sound repetitions akin to a bouncing ball. We all like bouncing balls. Um, I honestly, th that's the first time I've heard it. And it's actually very nice. I quite like that. Um, and mm -hmm. Sign Vibes have got a great reputation for producing really good quality plugins at very affordable prices. Um, do you like your bouncing balls, Kent? Yeah, it depends. Not on hot <laughs> days. Um, I, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, I mean, I mean, how many of these type of delays are there now? Probably loads. There's a lot. In there, there's quite a few of them. There, yes. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing. I mean, yeah, you, you start building up folders full of these type of little things, which is why why they're good. To, you know, as long as they're not very expensive. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's those sort of things. Go. Oh, I remember buying that. Maybe I'll use it on this. Yeah, yeah I think uh, we all, we all suffer from that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've seen many of them, everything. Yeah, indeed. Um, you can actually get this as well for the Korg um, log uh, instrument. So you can put this on a, a mini log, pro log, uh, the NTS one, and so on. And that's slightly cheaper at nineteen dollars uh, plus VAT. So uh, it, they they do they they often do that. You know they um do it on both platforms which is always very interesting bouncing your balls Ken, uh, sorry not kent um ben mm. i i had a mess with it i've got to be honest uh I, I i really liked the sound of it but i couldn't get to grips with what was going on <laughs> right <laughs> it. it was like it was very for me it was very alien to to a normal delay just right like, the way the timings worked and that. Okay. Uh, but like flicking through the presets, it sounded awesome. And some of them, uh, like, had like, it sounded like filter effects going off, you know, like after, on the delays afterwards. It, 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 really, really effective. And I did like that. Uh, you can see there, it's got an input send and return. Uh, like, normally you've just got like a, a, a an input and a mix level, haven't you? You can get some good combinations with that. And I'll yeah, just, but it was that um, it was that time, but combined with the, the the bounces, it was it was confusing me. But I only spent about 15, 20 minutes with it, really, to be honest. So, uh, but yeah, oh, one thing I would say is about the demos, because you know when we're reviewing these things, I, if I can help it, I never buy them because. I might not like them, so so I'll, I'll get a demo where it's possible. But the time limited demos would be preferable with, with with something like this, I think, because when you're messing with something, and then the sound suddenly drops out, you think you've done something wrong, and then you're changing <laughs> everything back, and then you remember that it's the demo and it dips, yeah. you know, every every two minutes. And I, I, I could have come across some wonderful sounds and then panicked and sh shoved everything back. Uh, and I, I thought that the P forty two was playing up as well. I still <laughs> had, I still had that effect on, and it was dipping the volume of the P forty two. And I was like, oh, what's going on here? And then, so it, yeah, I understand why they do it, but I think a time limited demo would be nicer, you know? Because yeah. if after, even if it was like hours you know if it was limited to 48 hours or something after that you, you got a pretty good idea that you want to buy it you know so yeah 
yeah. I'd prefer that that format. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Chris. Yeah, uh, it's an interesting plugin. Uh, you can set the direction of how the kind of bouncing ball architecture works. So basically, it's a changing the delay time. Uh, I think as you had read, Robbie, exponentially. So you can have it where it's long delays that go to short delays. So just like, you know, again, bouncing a ball. like Yeah. And you can have it go the other way where it starts fast and slows down. It's more to to me. It's more of an ambient delay. I, I played with it a little bit, and uh, sound quality is great. And, and of course, the price is awesome. And just to remind people, if you've got any other Sign Vibes mm. plugins, they always give you a code, so you get uh, what is it, twenty percent off or something? Yeah, uh, I think it brings it down to like something like thirty one or thirty two dollars mm -hmm. uh, around there. Um, so they're they're really great deal. I I think. On this one, uh, I, I'm going to pass on it because of the Nix delay that we will talk about. But yes. What, what do you think, Robbie? I yeah. I mean, I I like delays, but I don't like fussy delays. I like my delays to be very subtle. Um, oh, this and, is not the plugin for that. <laughs> exactly. And so, whilst I, I I I am impressed by the quality and the price and everything, this is not something that would. And that's like, yeah, if it came as part of a package, then fine. But it's not, I, I'm, I'm not going to go out and buy this because I like, I like d subtle delays. Um, I like big, complex reverbs, but I like very simple delays. So, yeah, yeah. there you go. Um, it's interesting. And of course, it's a good price. I might pick it up. I might, if I'm going to pick it up, I'll probably pick it up for the NTS one because uh, it's half the price. And, um, you yeah, know, that, that probably get probably get more use but uh, if you are interested it's signvibes.com dispersion it's 39 dollars plus vat for mac comes in audio unit vst3 and aax formats and as kent said you know how many delays are there out there a shit ton apparently because there's even more now with this one um let's actually let's bring up the demo video for it first and we'll play that and let you have a listen to the interestingly named other desert cities by audio uh, damage um let's play this little demo for you Oh. We're going to be looking at a brand new delay plugin for one of my favorite plugin manufacturers, Audio Damage, called Other Desert Cities. Other Desert Cities is a fully featured delay plugin that has six different algorithms, each offering a different flavor of delay. Everything from simple rhythmic effects to reverses to pitch shifting to multi tap to this wonderful granular delay called Sky Valley. You're hearing Spitfire Stratus running first into the granular delay and then into the audio damage EOS 2. And as we increase the mix, it becomes something completely different than what it was before. So this is more my kind of delay where it becomes almost an instrument in its own right because it changes something so drastically mm -hmm. and is not you know lots lots of bouncing balls everywhere uh granular stuff always you know floats my boat this sounds really good i love the name as well it's taken from a like a highway sign isn't it that points off one of the inter is it i-10 out of la yeah. this is other desert cities <laughs> so and there's yeah, a lot of them. Yeah. in the inland empire yeah 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 so um yeah audio damage um other desert cities um who's got any thoughts on this one while i call up the other page anyone chris will have. should oh, we go I, to chris I, I love you guys want to go first let's go I kent love it. i haven't tried I love it. it kent loves it i love it um it's very um very altiverb esque mm. um yeah i like i like i like stuff that does this I, I think it's got that one of those features on it where it can do the tuned tails mm-hmm so when you change the, the, the pitches and the, the actual tail changes pitch to match yes. what you're playing at the time. And I love all that. Um, but what, what I liked about this um, was the price. Yeah, because it is stupidly cheap at, uh, well, full price is only 79 bucks, but at the moment it's 59 Yeah, exactly. I mean... How much was Altiverb? It was like eleven million dollars. Yeah, or something, yeah, it? something. Yeah, yes, eleven gazillion. Some, some 
large amount of money. And this is like, wow, and it does all that. I'm going, yeah. Yeah. Do you know what? I'm having one of them. He's getting one. <laughs> I, I'm seriously tempted. I've been spending 40 or $50 or, or pounds here or there on like voice packs or little plugins. And this one, I keep thinking, oh, no, not another 50 quid. Because that's kind of what it is, I guess. Fifty nine dollars, yeah. probably about forty five, well, fifty Fiona, quid. Fiona hid my um, my debit card, <gasps> and which is funny, but because I can remember the number, so it's. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's all it's like, all yeah. too easy, isn't it? Because you know what it's like. You've got an iPad, and you're sitting back in a chair, and you go, "Oh, that's really nice." Four six nine two one five. Oh, okay, right. I'll go and download that at some point. I have yeah. to write it down now because I buy so much stuff and then don't actually go upstairs and actually download all the gear. And I've got a list <laughs> of about, I'm not kidding you, there is a list of about 23, 24 different things that I have to go and download that I have bought. <laughs> and thank God I wrote them down because I'm going, did I buy them? Oh, I, oh, I bought one of them. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> so I'll get around to it at some point, but yeah. yeah. And that's going on the list, definitely. I like that. Yeah. I like that. The bouncing yeah. balls thing is a bit balls. Really. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, 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 fair enough. Yeah, no. it's all right. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, no, it's not for me. That's basically no. what I'm saying is it's like, mm. yeah. But that, yes, yes, please, all day. Good, yeah. I, th I think you've convinced me now. I think I'm definitely going to buy that. <laughs> um, yeah. Right. I've got to go to the little boys' room because that beer, I'm not used to it. It's gone right through me. So um, I will turn off, I will turn off my camera, but. It. Shall I leave you all three on screen? Or, yes, or, yes. Just I'll leave do that. Charge. Three. Who's in what, charge? What are we going to talk about? Well, no, you can talk about this. <laughs> all right. <laughs> talk about this. Now talk but, about Robbie. Well, you can do that. I can still hear you. Yeah, um, yeah. But, yeah, no, I'm just going to turn off my uh, my camera and microphone <laughs> while I go and avail myself of the facilities. But Scary please do this. talk about um, – carry we, on talking about get, this. Can we not get Dom in while you're gone? No. No, oh, too, right. it's too much hassle. I'd love to, right. but it's too much hassle. <laughs> how, <laughs> how long do you expect him to be gone, Ben? Yeah, I'll be the only guy for a tinkle. <laughs> Why have you got to turn off your camera? You're going to do it in, into a bucket there. My, I, this is a bedroom with an ensuite that has been converted into my shit. So my toilet is like literally <laughs> next door. You would hear everything, and and you probably we know it. now. Yeah, no. but now you know. So anyway, I'm yeah, going to turn this off. Talk amongst yourselves. Right, okay. <laughs> <coughs> Breakfast and lunch. <laughs> can on, but he's right. can he? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, this one I picked up. I already got it. Downloaded. Oh, you already got it. Oh, cool. And have been using it. Right. Uh, I, I found it really interesting. So, uh, kind of like you guys, like if there's... You know, there, there there's so many plugins, and I've got a ridiculous amount, but it's... The part of making music, you know, I, I did it for a living. I, I do part of it now for a living. And plug in and gear are the things that are like, I can say, like, it's a hobby. I just enjoy it. Like, I, I like to try a whole lot of different things. And then when I, when I you know, kind of narrow it down onto these are the ones that I'm really going to use and I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to like these. And it's great when we can have demos to try. And I totally agree with what you're saying, Ben, like, you know, it, it's it's actually a better thing, like when the volume drops on a on a demo, rather than you know getting sprayed with a bunch of white noise at oh, really yeah. loud volume. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. awesome. But um, yeah, this one is is quite interesting. Um, this is not really what I would go to for like a really vibey. I'm gonna you know spice up some lead guitar or synthesizer or something. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's it is really more of a creative delay, and so. There's, uh, just for the people who haven't tried it, uh, there's a bunch of different engines in it. Well, not, well, it's, was, was it four or six? I don't remember. Uh, there's like a, for, like a forward and a reverse and a multi-delay, a granular engine. Um, and so they've given it a lot of features to make it quite clever for sound design. And so I just, I just kind of got, went down the rabbit hole with it last night playing it and was having fun and like creating sounds. And there's a lot of things that you can't do on a regular delay plugin that you can do on this. And it's got the envelope controls and LFOs. And uh, against kind of one of those things like you don't really need a manual for it. There was one thing I looked up, there was one feature in one of the engines where I had to go to the manual and look it up, like, well, what does this do? And it was basically a feature where on the reverse delay uh, part of it, you can click this uh, button and every other delay will come back, you know, reversed and then forward, 
reversed and forward instead of just all reversed. So different things like that, and then using the LFOs to modulate different parts of it. Um, like it's got a stereo width, where usually like on a, a delay plugin, you know, Valhalla delay or something like that's great. It's going to separate the sound of the delay, and you get the one side, you know, 12 milliseconds later, and it has a nice, lush, big stereo image. But you can modulate those two sides. Uh, yeah. with an LFO so you can have one going a little bit shorter while the other one's going a little bit longer and create a like a rich like stereo chorus modulation or you can do it in another part of the plugin or you can have a uh, you know multi-voice modulation going on in different parts of the plugin so quite a quite a fascinating delay mm. Mm. So what kind of application do you see yourself using it in? You know, what would you, you said you wouldn't put it on a, a synth lead or a guitar. Yeah, lead. yeah, I mean, I mean, you can, and you can dial it in to, to do, like versus say the bouncing ball delay, which is very, you know, specialized. Like this, you can make those kind of nice, normal sounds. It just, you know, to me, I would go to a plugin that was a little more um, detailed about the tone of it, you know, like how the saturation is applied and or the, the filters and all that kind of stuff. Whereas this is like really deep in the the, the modulation aspect of it in the engine. So um, like for ambient music, I, I, I really like ambient music and, you know, anything that's granular interests me. And so... Um, you know, using this, the reverse engine, which actually was the engine that I didn't think I would really spend a lot of time with. And it was so it was so well done uh, and so musically done. You can have you can control the crossfades of the reverse delay and it just just I don't know, it, it works. And that's all you ever wanted to do. I'm back, by the way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my hands are clean um yeah it's it's i think it's a lovely thing and i think yeah. kent's convinced me to to buy this um so maybe i will at the weekend yeah well, I'd, I'd put i'd like to put actual hardware synths through these sort of things mm. yeah yeah and run that as, an, as a separate track with yeah in the door absolutely as well and drums yeah. too like you can yeah. do some really interesting things with drums or just random yeah. samples that you have and then mm -hmm. start manipulating it for kind of a bed of sound mm. yeah yeah Cool stuff. Well, that is Audio Damage's Other Desert Cities Delay Plugin. It's currently on offer at 59 US uh, and is available now from audiodamage.com. One more thing about that. Audio mm. Damage has some other interesting plugins, but the one that I like the best from them is uh, Quanta, which is a uh, granular synthesizer. It'll, okay. it'll kill your it'll kill your computer if your computer's from two thousand nine. Uh, so don't <laughs> yeah. don't do it. Yeah, but it is a really cool sounding granular synthesizer. Nice. There you go. Do they do any kind of like multi buy offers or anything like that? I don't know. I've always got their no. plugins on sale. I mean, I've only got right. I think I've got three. One I got from free through free uh, through uh, plugin boutique. I don't remember. It was like Dub Station. I think it was just like a regular delay like mm. a kind of dub delay yeah. and then there's the quanta and this one but you know i just wait just find stuff on sale cool excellent stuff right let's move on to the the next piece we haven't had um a, a new spitfire lab product for what at least a couple of weeks um and so here comes another one um this is the ondes musical or musicales music musicales i, I don't know how, how you're pronouncing that properly but it sounds a bit like this these ethereal expressive sounds have been created by applying a range of processing techniques to my On Musicale, a faithful recreation of the On Martineau, a rare early electronic instrument. This is what it sounds like. And because creativity shouldn't be complicated, we've made it into this. And best of all, it's free. So it sounds like I actually got 
the second word correct and not the first one is on musical um based uh, or similar to the um i think what was the original on there's martin something or other martin martin yeah the martin mm. I think oh, I've, that the, uh, I, I think I've seen the, the, the great Ian Body play one of those. I think he's got mm. one and he makes it sound amazing. This again, this we can't complain. This is great. This is free. Um yeah. it sounds really cool. And again, you know, it's probably got more of an ambient vibe than than anything yeah. else, but a lovely, lovely little thing. It's it's got more uh, variety in it than than the previous labs, I think. There's quite right. a few quite usually there's only slight differences in you know like right. you get like the you know the guitar or whatever and there's very slight differences this has got some quite different sounds in it like uh, staccato sounds and mm. ethereal sounds and it, it again it's excellent and the labs collections building it up into like something that's it's almost like a an ambient workstation now yeah what you've got in labs you can you can just make i reckon you could make an ambient track no problem with yeah. just labs and nothing else it, it, 41 it, yeah. instruments in there now 41 yeah. free instruments with that Sounds little awesome. custom plugin yeah it's uh yeah can't go wrong what do you think kent yeah you all like all that sort of stuff's good yeah. yeah all this sort of stuff's good man yeah so and it's spitfire say no more yeah indeed chris yeah i uh i downloaded it but i forgot to try it because i had gotten a little wrapped up last night in uh the other desert desert cities but what i meant to do is play <laughs> this plugin into into the desert cities mm, but yeah. i forgot and i lost yeah. my mind on it yeah so it should be good yep it's always good um so if you want to get that it's labs.spitfireaudio.com and then it's the on music car which you can find in amongst the 40 other uh, amazing little free instruments that they provide for you. So I'm getting really, I've got a new chair anybody, yeah. and I'm just like really comfy. I'm getting closer, sorry, further away from my microphone. I'm having to sort of bring it out here because I'm just getting so cozy and comfy. Um, I think it's the beard. I think it's got nothing to do with the chair. Yeah. Do you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a lightweight now yeah. because I, yeah. I've been off the beer for a very long time just trying to, cut things out that will maybe help me lose a little bit of weight not that it's had much of a difference but it's helped um but we went out uh we had some friends over at the weekend bank holiday and i had some beer left over which i thought was a terrible thing to have so i'm trying to clean it up um so i'll have another one after the show Love it. yep indeed right um last kind of minute news this was uh announced today and i got quite excited about this one i have to admit because i do love drum machines um and i i love certain drum machines more than i have others and the ones that i love tend to be not the ones that other people i'm not a big fan of the 808 i'm not a massive fan of the 909 but i do like the lin but I also like the TR-707. I've always had a thing about the TR-707, which is good because Roland have just released the TR-707 and its Latin American sibling, the 727, as part of Roland Cloud. In 1985, Roland released the now famous TR-707 and TR-727 rhythm tozers. Taking their rightful places next to other classic Roland rhythm machines, this dynamic duo of drums and percussion has appeared on hit tracks in a long list of genres. Thanks to our analog circuit behavior technology, you can now have the authentic sound and experience of these influential drum machines right inside your DAW, with modern upgrades to take them to all new territories. Here we have an instance of the TR-707 plugin. As you can see, the layout is very similar to that of the original hardware, with all of the individual volume faders right here on the top. And this feature became very important for the 707 and 727 because they both found a home with a lot of early live electronic acts. And having access to the volume of each part was very important for playing live. So there you go. We've got the 707 and the 727, um, which are now part of the Roland Cloud. Uh, so if you subscribe to that, you get these. And they've also done an update on the 606, the 808, and the 909, although they're just 
like bug fixes. And I'm not entirely sure what they were, but I am super chuffed to have a seven, a proper decent seven Oh seven in my, uh, Sonic arsenal now, shall we say, um, th thoughts on these guys. Am I, am I the only one that's getting a little bit moist about the gusset on these? I, I had the 727, but that's uh, it, it's like an accompaniment to the 707, yeah. isn't it? But it's I the only Latin had, percussion. I only had the 727, so I, I had a like a Calypso period in my life because <laughs> I didn't have... <laughs> Uh, or as Ken, <laughs> as, as Ken put it in, in chat earlier, um, you had your Miami sand machine moment. Yeah, yeah. So it'd be yeah. interesting to see how what I had that I, I thought was pretty useless will, will work with the original thing side by side. So I'm quite interested in that. And it is, it, it is like you say, it, it's, it's the less uh, used out of all the famous drum machines. So, yeah. you, you know, you, you're getting something a, a bit... bit Bit more original than sticking an eight oh eight or nine on, yeah. nine on, on the track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, if somebody offered me an eight oh eight, I would probably snap their hands off. But I would oh, then yeah. have the dilemma of: do I keep it or do I sell it and buy myself a seven two seven and a seven oh seven? And yeah, buy the buy the ones that I really like. And a car. And, and a, a car. House. Yeah, and a house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and a yeah. Lindrum. And, um, yeah. <laughs> um, Ken, um, do you have many of these passing? Yeah, you know, the originals passing through your hands. Yeah, yeah, and this is good that this is available because it'll be fantastic to have the um, 707 and 727 just disappear off the face of the planet. <laughs> so um, would you feel? Be, no, the, the, the availability of particular parts on them, no sliders, forget it. You know, yeah. So, uh, yoy, yoy, yoy. so if it could be properly emulated in software, which kind of, let's face it, Roland Cloud or particularly good at doing mm. um then yeah cool it is cool yeah it's great did they do the yeah. 505 not yet because the 505 was my favorite right yeah believe it or not that was a small uh, one wasn't it yeah yeah and surprising how um in certain drum machine circles you go oh i like the tr 505 and people just slowly bringing knives out from under the <laughs> <laughs> Because it wasn't apparently a very famous favorite drum machine, but so yeah. But when we're going to get things like the RX seventeen, mm -hmm. I mean, got I know one. it's not Roland, but when we're we going to get one, yeah, you know, when we, proper software version of that would be nice yeah. as well, yeah. And then we can, yeah, we can all start party in the street, you know, yeah, get going. Because the RX seven, there was the RX seventeen, and there was the RX seventeen. L, which was the Latin version. I guess that was Yamaha's yeah. answer to it. And then they combined both of them and put them in... 15, was it? No, one of those, which is the RX-21, uh, which was uh, oh, the 17 yeah. and 17 L combined. Um, yeah. Yeah, love, good good little machines, really good so little machines. Yamaha aren't very good at maths. No, <laughs> they're rubbish. No. They're, do you know, some, <laughs> uh, somebody was questioning me about their, their naming conventions and how... Like, um, the bigger numbers were the worst, you know, the less specified machines. Because if yeah. you look at, like, so let's take the DX range for itself, so the best DX is the one, yeah, the worst DX is the hundred, or actually, maybe it's not 20, it's 27. <laughs> well, it's the same 27 and the hundred is the same, CS, yeah, but the, the, the best CS is the 80, exactly. And the worst went one, the other is, way. yeah, but the other one, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they just, yeah, <laughs> anyway, no, but anyway, yeah. um. Ben, are you? Have I spoken to you about this? I can't remember now. Oh. I can't remember what we're talking about. TR seven oh seven. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I said about the seven two seven, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Chris, uh, I I look forward to trying the seven oh seven, and I'm afraid of the seven two seven. I was it's so. <laughs> Ken commented something about Miami Sound Machine cover bands <laughs> to us, and it got me laughing because I just got this image. We just watched the episode of Futurama where uh, they're using the what-if machine, and what if Bender the robot became human, and so he's at this, I don't know, club or something, stuffing his face full of food because he's become human and enjoys it, and he's like, <laughs> what's happening to my hips? Why are they moving around so much? And the music's playing. It's got kind of like Miami Sound Machine stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like, I wouldn't want that to happen around here. It might be very wow. embarrassing for me. So, 
Um, I've got to correct myself um, because blah, 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 where is it? I sing the body electric has just uh, point out. I've got my numbers wrong. See this bloody Yamaha. It's all your fault. So the RX 21 and the 21 L are the kind of the, the equivalents of the TR 707 and 727. IE one was just traditional drums. The other one was Latin. Then they combined the two into the RX-17, and that's what is up there. The yeah, because I was thinking, I was going, hang on a minute. I yeah. seem to remember lots of clinky clankies and and, and stuff on it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so I, this, did have, yeah. I did have you, the, you did the have Miami right. Sound Machine one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but the, the RX-5 trumps them all because it's got, like, loads, and you can put more sounds in the back as well, which is even better. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've got a TR... What have I got? I got a TR uh, Rhythm seventy seven. Mm. Yeah, see that would be hey, nice uh, if they if they did some of those like the CR seventy eights or those really early TRs. Mm. That that would be nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or yeah is, <clears throat> I'm surprised that they haven't done one for the CR seventy eight yet because mm. that seems to be a very popular one I'm amongst really like at least amongst uh, Phil Collins and Radiohead fans. Well, quite. Yeah. Absolutely. I, uh, uh, and Blondie the same fans. Person. Sorry, <laughs> not necessarily the same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> usually not. Usually not. No, last no, no. last Friday, right after the show, though, my buddy brought over his uh, sequential Tom, and I did a mod mm. for it, which uh, I think I told you guys about. That was really cool. So it was fun, kind of playing around with that, and um, the mod opened it to a whole bunch of new sounds. Uh, we replaced the EEPROM and the other chips and stuff, and did a whole bunch of technical stuff to it but it was fun and it sounded good mm. afterwards yeah i think we're having a bit of a uh, like a drum machine renaissance at the moment with a lot of these mm -hmm. um plugins and and yeah. like old uh, you know, hardware things that are coming out with the old sounds and um of course you know behringer are supposed to be releasing the lm drum at some point soon that'll be interesting um not sure yeah, if this, i'll go for one of those this mod uh that i did the new EEPROM stuff came with Lindrum sounds on it. Nice. nice. Plus you have the, the cart, like the kind of stuff that you have in your uh, DX stuff where it has the button and you can cycle through stuff. Right. I yeah, can't remember yeah. what they're called, but um, yeah, it had, had a whole bunch of sounds like from like CR78 and Lindrum and DX stuff, but it was all in the sequential Tom. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. I, I I'm still getting, get things, yeah, they do need to get things going and, and they really need to do this. 78 yeah and, and mm -hmm. preferably the 68 as well mm. um, yeah my only um issue with the Roland cloud at the moment is that they've spent so much time with sample packs that like every mm -hmm. week there's a new sample i don't want the bloody sample right. packs i want the instruments and i'm just hoping that with the release because they released an updated version of the Roland cloud manager as well the other day which i have to say is running <laughs> quicker and more stable and hasn't asked me to sign in again which is good um so yeah it's um it's, it's kind of going well so maybe that the release of these two is the start of some more really interesting stuff um yeah. particularly the old jupiter fours or jupiter sixes would be nice as yeah, well i think six would be brilliant yeah, yeah. six six would be great as well yeah. as I, I i hope they do a, a jx 8p for the legendary series you know acb mm. Yeah, that's yeah. been stuck over in the Xenology, and I'd rather have it the other way. Yeah, absolutely. Cool stuff. Uh, mm. Some people talking about one of my favorite machines, um, the RM1X. I used to have one of mm. those and then sold it and wished and regretted it almost immediately. Um, very nice little uh, machine, that uh, drum machine synth sequencer all in one. Um, right, so uh, yeah, Roland, uh, let's get back to that. So it is available now on the Roland Cloud uh, if you are a subscriber. One of the other things that uh, came to light when they updated the Roland Cloud Manager was this Pro Selector. <laughs> and all I've got in my head is, yeah. is uh, Bow Selector, um, <laughs> which Chris probably doesn't get because he is a, is a distinctly English television show. Um, but um, this pro selector, I thought I have, I can't see pro selector anywhere. It says it allows you to switch out your your lifetime keys uh, and what have you. And I thought, well, I've got four lifetime keys, and I, I'm thinking of switching one out, but I couldn't find this feature. Apparently, it's, it is for the pro version, and 
I'm no. on the ultimate version, so I don't get to swap no, anything no, no. because I get everything. That's something different. So in the pro, uh, the the pro level service, which is the middle service, mm. they give you two legendary plugins to use during that time, and right. that it used to always be the D50 and 808. And now you can have it be any two that you want. Now gotcha. what you're talking about, if you go to Rolling Cloud and go into your account, like we were talking about the other day, mm. the list, like if you your loyalty or your yeah. play two for life or whatever, and there'll be a there'll be a, a listing of the uh, plugin, and then there'll be a little trash can. And mm -hmm. while you're subscribed, uh, although I think I, so my subscription, subscription ran out and I think I can still, I might be able to do it now. I, maybe they'll fix that. Mm. But um, <laughs> you, you'd hit the trash can and it would take that one away and then you would be able to select it from the list again. Right. Okay. But cool. only while you were, it was it used to be, it was only while you were subscribed before and that will prob probably is how it's supposed to be. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, I was I was completely missing the point and um everything was fine and I wasn't missing out on anything but um so somebody asked uh, how much Roland Cloud is these days to subscribe. Yeah. Um and that's a very good question. 199 dollars if you buy a year mm. uh of the ultimate level and I think by month it's 19.99 again for the ultimate and the the core or whatever is was it like five bucks or so? Yeah, and then there's a free. Isn't there a free version that just allows you know some well, sort of generic access? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you have the manager, then you can do all their free trials and everything. And I think uh, I, I'm not sure. I was looking at the other day, like their effects thing. I think if you have the account, you can use that. But I don't remember if that's the if the just own the the manager or if that's the core level. I don't I don't recall. Right. Yeah. I I, I went for the um the annual one a couple of years ago because they were doing this play two for life promotion. So I thought I'll I'll get that as well. Um. And I renewed it this year, and I'm glad I did. Actually, it's, I, I was very on the fence about it for a while, um, but I think what you get for your money is good. What's that in pounds now? You know, uh, I think I paid like one eighty something for for a year's ultimate access. So that's like everything um, you get. You get the lot, uh, and then you get to keep two instruments. So you, I think for every year you get to keep one as a lifetime key so like you know you've got two this right. year next year you'll have three then four but at any time you can swap what those instruments are so you can pick a d50 say and then next year you think oh i've got fed up with the d50 don't use it anymore i'll have the juno 60 instead but then you'll also get a, another license as, as your year comes around again and then you can i guess after you know like a gazillion years you'll be able to keep it all and, and stop subscribing i think yeah. i might actually get drawn into it at, at yeah. some point Chris, I've not, re I've not regretted it. Chris, sorry, what, what do you think of the Roland Cloud effects that that have been recently added? Uh, yeah, so I haven't. Yeah, I haven't gotten to try them yet. All oh, right. Okay. Uh, I was just wondering because they seem very like Xenology based. Yeah. You, you know, are, it, yeah. It, it seems as though it's that's the engine for the effects. Right. But wouldn't it be nice if imagine if they use that ACB technology to like read yes. a space echo or dimension oh, I mean, D? Right, right away, like the three that would need to be done in the legendary series are just what you said: dimension D, space echo, yeah. and CE one chorus ensemble. Yeah, yeah, if they did yeah. those in the ACB, oh man, yes, yeah, that, that, that's yes, a, that's a real good avenue for them to look at, isn't it? That. Like quality yeah. effects, not not these Xenology things that they right. brought out. Yeah. But you know, you, you know, Arturi is beating them to it. They've already got their Dimension uh, D yeah. out, and there's so many others that are doing. Uh, Gino Chorus would be the other thing that you'd expect yeah. them to do. But now, Arturia and Tal and a whole bunch of other people are are doing Juno choruses. So it's not like we're left without options. But geez, like Roland should hire some people and really start getting the stuff out. Mm. Yeah, yeah, for those sure. Three, those three particular machines I have owned, mm -hmm. and every single one of them I sold for stupid money. Mm. Stupid good or stupid bad? Stupid bad. My CE1 oh, no. I sold for 20 quid. Oh, my oh. God. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> my Dimension D I sold for £280 to Coldplay. <laughs> And um, my, um, what did, the other one, uh, the 
Space Echo. The Space Echo I sold, uh, I think it was about £400 I sold that for. Um, and then within the next four or five years, they went whoosh, yeah. the ceiling. And it was like, you know. Sort Gutted. Of, <laughs> yeah, but, you know, we'll... the C1. But with the with the plugins though, I, I mean, being able to sync it to your DAW and you know change stuff out after the fact, yeah. it's so convenient. And then so many things where I kept buying them over and over again. And what would mm. happen? The cycle would be is like I love the ADA flanger, and I would buy one or I'd find one. Usually I'd find one broken and fix it. And I'd go, mm. man, this thing sounds amazing. And then like. Uh, two months later, I'd be like, that's worth a lot of money and I need some other gear, so I'm going to sell it. And then I'd, yeah. like a few months later, I'd be like, man, I really missed that thing. Maybe I should go find another one. I'd buy it and and that cycle along. And now with these plugins, like, well, I've got a, a Dimension D from from Arturia and a, and a Mutron Biphase from Arturia and, you know, the Space Echo from Audio thing and, you know, like all these rare, rare pieces of gear, like once owned that, you know, like you just you continue to lust after even though you sell them, but they're always the first up on the auction box. Uh, block mm. because of how much they are worth, and now it's just like I don't, I don't have to like worry about that so much. Like when I'm recording, like oh, I've got the plugin for it now, and they're getting really close in sound. Yeah, and I've got that Arturia uh, effects collection, and it's it's like getting used all the time. It's very yeah. good, and it's very yeah. good. And that and Luna Lander, the 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 my mm. staple effects now. That's all. I use. <laughs> yeah, well, you see, I I clearly can't be um, trusted with hardware. Um, so to be able to have this stuff uh, as software emulation where you just buy it the once and you, you're done you know or even if you're renting it as you say um, yeah. with the cloud but you know because I, I think it was um, I can't remember who it was I'm trying to remember his name now some famous musician and he was here and we were talking about gear and I said to him about some of these things that I'd sold and be just before they went skyrocketing and i never saw it coming and he said to me about he said he goes oh you would be brilliant um to send up onto the, the roof of a building for somebody who's going to jump off you know because they go life's worth living you know go mate i sold a cs80 for 175 pounds <laughs> oh yeah that doesn't my my problems don't seem so bad now yeah okay, cool. I'll come back in, you know I've, I've heard people still talking about that you know saying Oh, I heard Kent sold a CS8 for £175 wow. after restoring it. <laughs> Bonkers. And the, the bloke knocked me down from 200 Oh, wow. <laughs> no, that's, that, that, that's the, the that, twist that's the of the yeah. knife at the end. That trumps my GX10. Ten, mm, no. I, I sold a GX10 and the programmer for 300 quid. Like. Yeah. The, the two of them, like nothing wrong with them at all, oh, and it wasn't yeah. that long ago either. <laughs> I'm not like talking like 1995 or something. I'm talking yeah. 2018. Or <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh Christ, honestly. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, Inverted man. Pope says he sold uh, a mini mug for 50 pounds. Oh, oh. <clears throat> yeah. These things happen. Yeah, and congratulations to the winner of the uh, Oh yes. Foundation's Mini oh, Moog giveaway. Yeah. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Super jealous. Yeah. Super jealous. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't enter. Now I didn't win, did I? So no. yeah, but you know, I've, I've lost it's mine. all for a good cause. You what? Sorry, I've lost mine. Lost your what? Mini Moog. Yeah, I can't find it. I don't know where it's, it is. Is it in the garden? <laughs> Because we've heard you've got no, a lot I've, of synthesizers in the garden. Yeah, I know. But I've looked. It's not, I, I've done. I put it down somewhere, and I was like, "Where did I put it? I can't. Find, I cannot find it anyway." <laughs> it was a mini really mode. Well, you can. No. I can well, obviously you I can, can. Yeah. I, I, I can lose limbs. <laughs> <laughs> Get up in the and go. What did I do with my leg? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, no, I'm really bad. I'm really bad lately. Um, well, as we spoke about earlier, we did. Yeah. Memory has been. Uh, messing me about so and i can't find it i don't know where the hell it is it's not in my boot that's for sure well I hope, I, hope, I hope i didn't hand it out to a customer he goes it was all right i only handed in a stylophone <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's pimped my stylophone yeah. 
Put a yeah. new battery in my stylophone for me. Get a new <laughs> <one back. laughs> oh dear. Um, we had somebody ask about the, the the prices. So just I've got I've got it up on screen here. You if you if you get an annual subscription, you do save seventeen uh, percent over the monthly subscription. So core is uh, twenty nine ninety nine a year. Pro ninety nine nine a year, and ultimate one ninety nine. That's all in US dollars. So um, drop mm -hmm. it down a little bit for for pound sterling. Um, but you can do um, uh, a monthly subscription as well if you want to. Um, and then, of course, uh, you can buy lifetime keys for all of the instruments, I believe, or most of the instruments at around anything between 129 or actually 99 and 149. All there. Um, what One thing that I just, mm. before we uh, kind of round things off here, the one thing I did really, really like about these new um, 707 and 727 plugins was the fact that not only can you um, scale them to kind of like any size you want, which is great for people who are going uh, rapidly blind like myself, but also um, there is the option to change the skin on the front of the thing to make it uh, look like this. So you can actually have an aged 707 where it yellows the plastic. And if you look closely... Uh, yes. You've got little like um, scratches and stuff. scratches, and yeah. you know, the the you know with the bleaching around the the buttons, oh, yeah. and it you know it all helps with the sand. It makes it more. I was going to say analog, but it's not. Um, but oh, <laughs> it just makes authentic. it more authentic. Authentic. That's no, the word I was looking no, for. No, 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 but yeah, no. you could do that with no. um, the Roland Cloud, and also it comes with this memory cartridge, which if you click on the memory mem memory cartridge. You get a nice little window pop up that you can select your patterns or your your patch presets, voice presets, uh, from, and it's done really really well. Except the patch management of these instruments follows the patch management of all the others, which is bloody awful. Yeah. It's, it's quite an archaic way of doing things with these horrible drop down menus. But um, the the clicking on the memory cartridge shows that they can actually do patch management so, sort of quite nicely, but. Anyway, yeah. well, we might anyway. we might fix that soon, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. we're shouting at them, aren't we? Mm. Well, you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do it like this. <laughs> um, Andrew Rick says, "Yeah, seven. I know, I know. It's not analog. It's just I was it was a joke." Uh, <laughs> anyway, that is the seven oh seven, which is now and the seven two seven part of the Rolling Cloud offering. If you are subscribed, it's there in your library. Go and download out it now. now. Indeed, out now in a cloud near you. Which kind of brings us to the end of, of all of our news. We've actually filled a complete show with news topics for the first yes, time God. for God knows how long, which is all think, good fun. I don't, I don't think David Arnold would have got much chance to no. have, a, have a chat with us, really. With no, he would he'd probably be going, I don't know, I don't use that, sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, are we are we reviewing the um, the London Symphony yeah. Orchestra? No, no, we're not. Sure. The only no, thing about him rescheduling to next week <laughs> is that I won't get to meet him. But I'm a bit devastated. Well, I'm so sorry about that, but uh, yeah. you know, had you not had to move Mick McNeil, we wouldn't have had have had a space to put I him know. into. So yeah. there you go. Um, the council's next week as well. Well, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> that could that could be embarrassing. I held off publishing, you know, this show because we were still waiting for kind of confirmation. Mm. Um, and then I published. I thought, you know, stuff it. I think, you know, Kent Kent sent me a message. He's talking to him. He must be okay. I published. Half an hour later, Kent says, um, "You can't make <laughs> yeah. it." Yeah, it was fact because he he was saying about. He says, "All right, yeah, no, here's the thing and everything like that." And I'll have a look at the notes and everything like that. And then he went quiet. Then you hit me up and said, "Yeah, so is he doing it?" And I went, "Well, yeah, yeah you know, you know." And um, <laughs> I've now got his email, and here's the email, so you can send him the notes and everything. And then yeah. he come back going, you know, just had a phone call, blah, yeah. blah blah blah, that we can't talk about, and blah 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 blah. And um, it's like, oh he's, no, he's not doing it now. He can't do it now. He's really apologetic about it. Because he's a, a really well, he's a he's lovely a, guy. But, he's a lovely guy. He's in demand. Yeah. So yeah, and um, yeah, and then suddenly, and I, do you know what I had said to Fiona about um, two weeks beforehand? I said, "This is the guest that I arranged to come on the show. This is going to be the one that screws up. <laughs> I know it's going to be." 
I know it's going to be because <laughs> I set it up. And Robbie has told everybody that I helped set this up. So we know it's going to go. Yeah. And well, it, look, it's only gone a little and it's yeah. coming back. It's coming yeah. back. It's fine. It's, it's honestly, it's fine. We, we yeah. get to have him next week. That's absolutely fine. That's all we're, all yeah. we're worried about. Um, but look, Kent, thank you for, for stepping mm. in at such short notice. And, yeah. and offering to as well, we didn't have to ask you. You just you plain offered, and that was very nice. Of I you. was here. I know, and and <laughs> you might be back next week because David said he'd he'd like to maybe have you as around as well. He, so he would like me to hold his hand for him. Yeah. yeah. So so we we might have you then next week, and then of course we've got you the week after because it's your regular monthly. No, that's thing. that's too much me. No. That's like Tony Slattery. Do you remember Tony Slattery? <laughs> Vaguely, yeah. When he was just on everything. So he was, give it another yeah. couple of months and then I have a mental breakdown and you never see yeah. me again. <laughs> well, no, we don't want that. We don't want that. Um, so, or maybe we just put, as um, as Paul said, we'll get hands, get cardboard hands and yeah, sit him in there. And, yeah. and you could just come in with, you know, the, the, the cheesy fake German accent and pretend it's Hans Zimmer for it. For it. That'd be cool. Well, when I, when I asked him about coming to do this mm. um how, how, how do i put this um i'll put it in an expression shall i <laughs> <laughs> so basically yeah so it, the silence it's helpful, was then. definitely yeah. so it wasn't a no yeah, yeah. It wasn't a lie, but <laughs> it's the guy. I know. I know. He's 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 just stupidly busy. Yeah, yeah. All the time, you know, because mm -hmm. he's technically he's technically the guy at the moment, isn't he? Um, yeah, absolutely. For, There's a lot there. coming out. There's a lot coming out because obviously James Bond is going to be out in a few weeks. We had Mel on the show um, last week because he was involved in that. So I'm really looking forward mm. to seeing and hearing what what was mm. done there. Um, I haven't heard from him yet about that uh, the PPG three hundred module. Though. He's been. Oh yeah. I thought he was going. To, I thought he was going to contact me about that. Well, I think he's been busy. I know because I I, um, I spoke to him the other day and he was like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of like over here somewhere and I can't do anything." So, mm. but yeah, I'm sure we'll be in touch. Anyway, um, we have uh, come to the end of the show, guys and girls. Um, it's been brilliant as always. Um, Let's just quickly go around the room, find out what everyone's doing this week. So have you got anything really nice lined up on the workbench, Kent? Anything interesting, or is it just more Rev 2s? Uh, I still have the um, X Genesis memory mood to finish off. Right. Um, I call it the X Genesis memory mood, although that means absolutely nothing. Right. Uh, what else is there? Oh, my God. There, no, there's a, there's a large swathe of stuff, as usual. Um, a lot of stuff that I've got to get through, um, and I'm like I say, I'm trying to do uh, work around the house mm -hmm. and finish the studio and yeah and everything else. And it's yeah, it's just I just, I just want to sit down and go. <laughs> so this has been a bit of a break I'm for like, you. Yeah. <laughs> this has been nice actually because I would actually would have been downstairs at, um, right now fitting mm. um, new trimmers to the voice cards on the right. memory mode because there's there's two voices that um, it, you know you push auto tune mm -hmm. and it comes back with um, sorry what was the question <laughs> you know, it's, that was it, it's <laughs> like you go, I don't think you have any voice cards in this sorry because they were they're so out and mm. then they come back and then they go again so Right, and it's so that's what I would be doing right now if it wasn't for doing this. So thank you for that. No, you're more than welcome. We we like yeah. to to help. Um, it's, it's saved me a lot of pain. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Chris? You got anything planned for the week ahead? Uh, too much to do, but uh, some of it very very much fun. So uh, we'll continue to work on a, a demo track, and then I, I've got to do a video for um, the P42 Climax uh, right. again. Uh, that's from Pulsar Modular. Go check that out, and we'll be posting uh, in our Facebook group for the contest or the mm -hmm. uh, drawing for one of the free copies of it, which I highly yep. recommend. 
And uh, I mean, yeah, that some of that stuff. So I, I I did do some filming for that like sequential mod. Uh, so maybe I'll get that put together at some point. But uh, other than that, uh, be sure to check out Ramsey tomorrow. And uh, yes. Oh no, uh, he's not on. He's off. Not on. Oh, he's, he's off. off. Right. He's out so, camping. Yeah. yeah. And so your your next your next dose will be on Sunday with, with uh, Mr. Wiggly. Dominic Hawkin and Mr. Wiggly. Yep. Yeah. Yep, look forward to that one. Um, oh, yeah, uh, Ben, mm. more gigs? No, uh, not not this week. We're, we're, we're having a little break. Um, right. We're back out next week, but uh, we were supposed to be getting together in here uh, and doing some uh, kind of pre-production type of stuff. And I decided to rewire my studio again. And... So now all I've got is a computer that works, the mixing <laughs> desk, and the matrix proof. So <laughs> uh, what I wanted to do was introduce everything at a synth at a time, you know, to make sure that everything was optimized the yeah. most it could be. And then I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to like, like capture the, the process in music? So you got like now i've got virtual instruments and a matrix brute so i'll make a track with that and then i'll add some more things and make another track and then the the final track of this collection of tunes should all be hard work yeah. should and it'd be <laughs> interesting to see if the quality shifts uh, any throughout listening to the, yeah. the songs going is it is there any <clears throat> sense in Having hardware setups now, or can you do it all through software? My uh, the perennial music argument. project, music project might help a little bit in that. If it comes off, I'll probably just mm. get bored and rewire it all over the uh, the weekend. So that, that's what I'm doing anyway. Studioing. Mm -hmm. I just, somebody's Alexa was going off in the background there. <laughs> Not mine. Not mine. <laughs> Wasn't mine. I don't think. Well, it might have been. I didn't turn mine off. Um, Excellent. Good stuff. Uh, that's the button I want. I've got some new toys. I got this delivered the other day. Um, I can bring Very this nice. kind of into shot without stretching the cable. It's the, um, the Sonicware Live and XFM. Uh, it came all the way from Japan. It was pre-ordered about six months ago, and there's there been some delays. But it is a cracking little piece of kit. Um, I'm just kind of getting to... You know, be familiar with it because there's a lot of kind of sub menus and menus and there's no menu screen so you kind of kind of there's sort of function shifts and shift functions and, and stuff but it sounds I mean, I'll just play one of the demos for you it sounds great for a little you know it's essentially a little plastic box uh, with a few buttons on it, it's it's really really good. So, what, um, what's the build quality like on it? Good. I mean, yeah. it's 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 kind of um, it's plastic, so there's 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 no metal in here at all, uh, well, apart from maybe the components inside. But it's a plastic, like an ABS plastic case. But it's it's sturdy. Mm. It's light. You can have six batteries in the bottom to to make it completely portable. It has built-in speaker, um, full-size MIDI. Audio in, audio out, stereo. You've got headphones and then sync in, sync out, and the power supply. No USB, nothing like that at all. Oh. Um, not entirely sure if it supports firmware updates. I guess it would have to go through MIDI uh, to do that. But it's a very deep machine. The, the sound engines on it, you know, this, this cro cross modulation um, FM synthesis. So it's not like typical, like algorithmic based FM. Um, so the sounds are you know, kind of rich and warm and you can do all sorts of things. And it's just, it's a four track sequencer with uh, six note polyphony. Yeah. It's good. Lots of good fun. Um, so Damn highly recommended. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's like, it cost me less than 200 quid yeah. with, with the, with, I can't reach it over there, but it came with a limited edition carrying case as well. It's oh, like a one of the firm ones, not just like a, a floppy bag. So yeah, I got that. Um, and I'm going to be trying to do more programming with this thing um, because I'm I'm just in love with it. And they're not getting it back. I don't care. They're, they're not having it back ever. So because um, I, I did this the other day. So I've been making it sound like a profit five. <laughs> <laughs> 
um, which is not difficult to do at all. Um, and I actually found a website where maybe we can talk to this guy. Um, he's done this thing called um, vintage component modeling, which sounds you know kind of technical, but what he's done is he's studied vintage analog synths, particularly vintage analog poly synths, and he's studied how the oscillators and the filters have their own individual variances and then applied that knowledge to today's kind of modern precise analog polysynths and then he's come up with a range of you know a way that you can just tweak each voice so that it sounds more authentically kind of you know original analog rather than precise modern analog so yeah it's um it's, a, it's an interesting beast, but it's such a joy to work with. I mean, I've never, never had so much fun playing with uh, mm. with an analog synth. So there you go. The uh, Andy uh, uh, EMX Gold uh, asked where you got your gaming chair from. Oh yeah, yeah. So I was very lucky. Like I said, I was telling the guys before. Come on, my my employer because I work from home. They they pay for it, uh, and I was going to go based on um, Dominic's uh, recommendation. He he was talking about the. Um, is it Secret Labs? I think the, the name is, and they do these really nice gaming chairs. But they were just a little bit out of my budget. And this is a Corsair T T two Road Warrior. Oh, gone all blurry then. There you go. Um, yeah, T two Road Warrior. But it's it's gorgeous. I mean, it's proper like you know sports car sculpted. Sits in there nicely. You can't once you're in, you can't move. It's got this lovely little rocking action. And I got it from Amazon basically however i do want to put a shout out to uh, edna's disco machine also known as graham uh, graham owns a furniture uh, office furniture company he did me some great quotes but i couldn't resist this because it's just so comfy mm -hmm. um so yeah amazon was i, I got this from but uh, they're, would they're, you be using that in our gran turismo session i might do but because i'd have to take it downstairs unless i can, oh, I can play it up here actually yeah, but i need right. a proper steering wheel you see See, that's what we also need to do is to Clearly, come up with. Yeah. 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 We, we, I, yeah. We, we need to come up with like a, a ProSynth Network Gran Turismo League or something. I'm sure yeah. there's others out yeah. there that play it. Because we've done it. Yeah. Kent and I spent the Sunday afternoon just hurling ourselves around all sorts of racetracks, weren't we? It's good yeah. fun. We didn't find it. I still didn't find Nürburgring. Did, did you find it? Yeah, the Nürburgrings. They, you know, it's Hockenheim that you were looking for, wasn't it? And yeah, I don't think Hockenheim's on yeah, there. Yeah, and no, that's what I meant. I don't know why I was saying Hockenheim. Uh, yeah, all the, all the Nurburgring. Or something. <laughs> yeah, it was Nurburgring. Yeah, Hockenheim's on project cars. But anyway, we digress. Yeah. We digress. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'll be doing programming synthesizers and fitting a new hard drive to my daughter's computer so that she can't complain to me. I can't do my homework because my computer's rubbish. So, I'm going to be doing that. Yeah, I'm getting my new 3XS next week. Very nice. Yeah. Mm. Motor very kitted out. Yeah. Lovely. Look forward mm. to seeing that. Brilliant. Well, Ben's buggered off somewhere. Um, oh, and Dominic now said in the chat room that he's got a secret lab coupon of anyone's. You didn't tell me that when I was looking for my chair, did you? <laughs> but then I suppose I didn't tell you that I was looking for my chair. Anyway, not to worry. Um, <laughs> I don't know whether we should say goodbye. Oh, there he's back. He's back. I was going to say. Back. He's back. Yeah. He's back. Um, very quickly, um, we've got some great guests coming up. Um, Andrew Brooks has actually just reminded me. Uh, he's off to see um, Heaven 17 playing uh, Reproduction and Travelogue uh, at Sheffield City Hall, uh, where it all began, I guess. Yeah. Um, but we've actually got Martin Ware coming up on the show on September 24th. So he'll be able to tell us all about that and how, how he's doing it. I've been watching the um, the show rehearsal pictures. Uh, it's looking very good. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how Heaven 17... In, reinterpret the stuff that Martin was originally doing with, with the Human League. But they're always good value for money. Great show. If you can never get to see them, it's always a great show. Next week, of course, we will, hopefully, fingers crossed, have David Arnold on the show, um, which will be fun. And Kent will be along with him as well. Um, and coming up in the you know the, the coming weeks, we've got Mick McNeil, we've got uh, Steve Picaro, we've got Axel Hartman, um, we've even got people like, uh, we've got Tim Dorney, um, we've got Ken Flux Pierce and many others besides. So lots to stick around for. Um, mm. To everyone that's in the chat room, thank you ever so much for your continued support. And um, we hope you enjoyed the show. If you're watching us on Catch Up, thank you for coming back. And make sure you hit 
the uh, the like button, the subscribe button, hit that bell, do all of those things. It just it really does help us. It's, it doesn't cost you anything. It's up there. Yeah, it's, no, it's down there. No, it's uh, it's there. It's there. That's it. There you go. That's there. there. Yeah. Go on, Chris. I just can't work out. What <laughs> He's got I'm a dog doing. in his head. There you go. <laughs> uh, please it's there. subscribe. Please subscribe. That's it. <laughs> Um, oh, it's caressing the corner. Mm, mm. <laughs> so if you could do that, that would be um, that would be really, really nice and fantastic. And, of course, you can join us during the week in the Facebook uh, page and the group uh, and chat along with us there. And um, we'll also be posting, don't forget, we'll be posting the link for the uh, Pulsar Modular P42 Climax plug-in giveaway in the description underneath this video very shortly we'll also be posting it on to the facebook page and we'll put it on the twitter account and we'll put it on the instagram account if you fancy winning one of three copies of that plugin there is a very simple question to answer just give us your name and your email address we will not use it for anything else but this quiz to let you know if you won and then we'll announce the winners next week how about that brilliant Guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. Have a fantastic weekend. Chris, you have a good long weekend because it's Labor Day weekend for you, yeah. isn't it, this weekend? Yeah. Which means I get a nice quiet Monday at work. Nice um, for you as well. <laughs> yes, indeed. And, um, yeah, we'll see you all same time, same place next week. Uh, thanks, everyone. Thanks, you in the chat room. I'm just uh, filling while I get the right video. Let's all wave goodbye. Ta-ta.